And of course, this will be subject to uh, review by you and Attorney Hills when we come to a repairable better. Does that want to start Cayman Corporation? Uh, Brookfield is not good. Incorporated out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. How many people actually come out of the requirement for them to meet you? Yes, they all come out. Talk to Paul and show them what's going on. Answer what questions they had. <coughs> Yikes. 146,000 even. Three seven seventy. Hundred forty three thousand seven hundred seventy dollars. No sense. Okay. We have to ask for the Blackie Paving Corporation out of Wauwatosa. Motion that uh, we look at the contract between Todd, Todd and Attorney Mills to uh, pay for the parking lot here at the town for Wolf Haven for $105,336.40. Second. 
more specific in this discussion. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I'm trying to recall back to when we opened all of these up before, and uh, wasn't it wasn't it the blocky that had a low? Premium? I thought it was a low bid. They were like 93 or 95. They had a nice year. It was one of them. Yeah, there was one of them. But that's what kind of brought this to our attention because they were so much lower. And they were actually adding more base. Like if we have bad, we have large trucks and equipment back here, they were actually adding like 11 inches. Of it. it was crazy. So that's what kind of brought us later to right this now. point. It surprises me that they're at where they're at now. I don't know if they forgot something on the. Right, but it was just surprising when I heard that number. But this is spelled out with right. between all the old kind of apples, the apples, everybody had the same thing. Yeah, bit on the same project. Great. The same same amount of asphalt, same amount of stone. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you the removal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Last time I I found my notes, last time mm -hmm. the span wasn't as big. It went from ninety-three to one hundred and thirty-five. Here, this is the lowest to the highest. 105 on 165. Yeah. We actually had more bidders this time, too. Mm -hmm. But didn't you kind of expect that uh, yeah, a lot of the people that do this the most in the middle of the class? They're right in the middle. Yeah, they so all they know the what they're doing. Oh. I mean, this is this is the first time that I've ever dealt with anybody from the parking lot. Okay. When would the job be started? Um, they they all know that it can't start until the concrete gets poured for the new police building, which is slated to start August 15th. The concrete work. Thank you. Okay, pass is going to the Do we have to Okay, uh, so we had a motion by Jan, and I think Bill seconded it. All right. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Forward. Not in court, please. Okay, and then your report, uh, you have a half a page on there. Good job on the roads. Yeah, everything, our, all of our road projects are done except for the one up here, which that won't get done until our parking lot is done because all the heavy traffic that will be going in around here. Sure. Um, otherwise, all the roads are, are done. All they have left to do is mm -hmm. put the shoulder gravel on and carve the road, which is supposed to be done this week. And restrict it. But probably with the county, because they changed the state, or I should say the DOT changed their standards on the width of the stripes. State and county roads went from four inches to six inches now. Our town roads are still four. Most of the townships are going to stay four for this year because of a big budget that extra cost and for the paint. Um, and uh, the wider, what I was told with the wider stripes is now for all the new vehicles with the lane deviation, it's to help better the vehicles to pick up where the road's at. Any chance we could? Throw some of that glowing paint in for when it rains, you can still see them. <laughs> there's, there's glass pieces in it, but they do work out. And you're going to hang around uh, for uh, some discussion on the ATVs while the company is like, you didn't have to get out of here. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's not No, I'm saying you're not, you're, you're just up here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Anything else? Any questions nice. for the ATV? Yeah, we need yeah, to okay. talk about the ATV side. No, 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 no. Anything else that? You're on a road. No, road. Yeah. Road. Okay. Next idea on the agenda is town DPW putting ATV signs on county roads. Uh, the earliest date that would be allowed for the county was July 1st. Yep. Right. Yep. The county put it back on all the townships that are open. It's up to them if they want to let them on the county roads. The county highway commissioner, they they made their own little safety committee and did a almost probably an eight month study on. Well, everything to do with having them on the county roads. And the two meetings that I attended, they didn't have a problem with them at all. Um, our county sheriff was there. They had very, very few incidents with troubles on the county roads. But it's they put it back on the townships, and it's the town's money to have them installed. 
All we would have to do is all the signs and posts we already have is just relocating them. There would be 12 signs that we would have to put up at the different parts of the county starting and stopping points. But that would allow access all the way through, because I know town of Troy, they passed it for their county roads. Um, people from around here, you could actually venture all the way to Jefferson County and quite a few others in the town of Lafayette, town of Spring Prairie. Their town of Lafayette is open now, which is just south of us. Spring Prairie is just south of us. They're working on it. It, uh, it hit the county pretty hard this year, the demand on getting ATV routes open. Does that mean if the town, if any town in the county chooses not to post the county roads, does that mean the ATVs are not permitted? That is correct. Right. Unless they are posted, they are not. It's passed at the county. But if it's a county rule, right. why, why does it need to be posted in order for, because we don't plow the roads, we yeah. don't cut the grass, we don't fix the roads. So yeah. why do I have to spend town money to put signs for the county on mm -hmm. the road? That was one that I don't know. They just put it back on the townships that the county wasn't going to put the money out there. It would be up at the township. If you want them to ride on the roads, it's going to be up to you guys to put the bill for it. Could I ask Chief Garecki to weigh in? Yep. I mean, how, how is that one. possible? In, in what aspect do you want me to weigh in? I want you to explain to me why. We have to post if it's a county ordinance because I can't supersede a county ordinance. I got to be 100% honest. I would have you'd have to ask the county. Okay. I would, it's kind of what my question was running, not to interrupt you, Chief, is, is what you're saying is we already have the signage, we're moving the signage. So we've already, yeah. we've already purchased the signage. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be relocated yeah. from yeah. where the town was. But their time is money. Yeah, and that's, but, yeah, that would be the only. Yep, I get it. Yeah, and that's what the county, the county said again. They, in order to allow us to do it, they had to act first. So they acted. They said, "Yeah, if you have it open for the your town roads, we give you permission to go ahead and do it." That's what they're doing. We're yes. giving permission. We did not act on this last month because we wanted to correct his input on this on his recommendation, uh, mostly enforcement safety. And his gut feeling is our enforcement, law enforcement officer with the roads to weigh in. So I guess that's the second, the real question we want to ask you is your recommendation on this. I'm not, I'm not going to recommend for or against. Okay. What I'm going to do is inform the board that there are some serious deficiencies at the state level with OWI laws and statutes regarding UTVs and ATVs and operating motor vehicle. So as an example, I hope it never happens in the entire state, which I know I'm wrong. You can have a person drive a UTV, crash and kill people, drive a UTV, crash and kill people, drive a UTV, crash and kill people, and not spend a single day in prison. Not one day. There are DNR violations. Civil, not criminal. You need to be aware of that. It is not a motor vehicle. It doesn't meet the statutory requirements. All right. And uh, we've talked to <clears throat> other chiefs around. They, they all have voiced their opinion. Okay. And everybody seems to be going for it, crossing their fingers, hoping that. We don't have a rash of fatal accidents down in this area with the amount of population. We're not Barron County. Makes sense for that. We're Wallace County, Southeast Wisconsin, high population, high traffic volume. But that's what our citizens want. That, that's why, again, we looked at last month, we wanted to get input. So, we're still in a discussion on this item. And again, really, what the question is, is whether or not the town wants to allow that to happen, right? Whether or not you know, Todd's going to have these guys move those signs. So let's continue this discussion. I have concerns. I have twice in the last 10 days 
had a ATV going in the opposite direction, not on the road, coming at me. And I think that I dropped my speed because I know the ATV probably shouldn't be going what I was, you know, I'm allowed to go 45. I think I dropped it to 35 or 30 because of my concern for safety. And I don't think it's safe when you have a unenclosed vehicle traveling at a different rate of speed next to enclosed, much greater weight vehicles traveling at a higher rate of speed. I just think it's a crash waiting to happen. And I sit on the board with the fire and and EMS people, and I don't see where that's a, a positive result. Okay. So you're against motorcycle driving on the road too? I, I didn't say that. So the comments are done, please. Um, Chad, you had mentioned a little bit uh, the last meeting, but you didn't really act on this. Have you did any more checking on your end? Have you had any comments on this, generally speaking? Well, I think that, and I appreciate what Chief Grecky is, is just informed because I did not know that, but you know, this is something that was at an annual meeting that was voted on by the people in the community and it was passed. And nine times out of 10, we what they want, we do. You know, we all obviously have last say on it. This was already voted in. Now you're just talking whether it's gonna be going on L, <coughs> it's gonna be going on you know, J, it's going to be going on ES, which in fact, what John was just asking about with the village, there's a few, there's a few places that are landlocked right now. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter that their ordinance is okay and they're in their front of their house, but they can drive down, down to there and then over there. This it does open that up. I'm always concerned about safety, but I'm also a believer that we, you know, we got to leave some of this stuff in, in in the hands of the operators, you know. I mean, no different than if you're driving a car, you're driving the gentleman over here sets up a motorcycle. I mean, you know, they're talking about when we came up about uh, doing it on our town roads, there's tons of curves, and if a big car is coming the other way and the ATV is coming the other direction, we look out. And I said, Well, no, look out when a big car is coming one way and a big car is coming the other way because it's even more difficult. And I'm not saying that things can't happen, but sometimes I we, we kind of got to go with what the people voted on. And, I think that this may be an opportunity. I know we discussed that we could take this away at any time. You know, if we find if we find that something that, that's getting abused or that our officers are not stop writing tickets, that all the citizens are complaining, we have that we have that option. And that was a discussion with first. Well, uh, just the point of correction on that though. The annual meeting was the discussion and the vote was on town roads, no mention of county or state or Correct. Or but it's, it was ATV. Yes, but it's ATV. Chief. Since September 26th of last year to now, I have received personally and reviewing the reports one issue of uh, recreational vehicles on the road. They were not UTVs, ATVs, they were motorcycles. I had a conversation with those two young men, and to my knowledge, to this day, after that conversation on the side of the road, that complaint has not uh, reared its ugly head. So I also don't want to disillusion the board. We are not chasing around UTVs, ATVs. It appears that the people that are operating them are doing so in a manner that does not bring the ire of their neighbors to contact us to go see them. So I want to make that clear to the board also. Right. Right. Yep. How much does the science cost? What they were, I thousand more i think for everything when we first did this for our township was like three thousand thirty two hundred. a lot of stuff you got to donate to right? yes we had some other clubs from the northern part of the state washington county uh, that donated what do you anticipate the labor would be to move the signs probably an hour per sign so 12 hours at the most 500 bucks well, you have two guys at 50 bucks an hour. <laughs> Joe, I just recognized. What do our current signs say? 
all town roads are ATV trials yes. or are all town destroy are all town destroy roads are ATV UTV routes unless otherwise posted. Okay. So if you move some of those signs onto the county road, how are people supposed to differentiate whether or not they're supposed to be driving on L, E, S, or J? Because those aren't technically. It's, it's in all the they're in the town. They're in the town. Okay. So all town roads, or all roads in the town is what it reads. <laughs> This town of East Troy route like, ends and then yes. like, it begins with the exact. Yes. I think it just says ATV route ends, ATV route begins. Okay. But there's yeah. other roads that say town of East Troy, yeah, some things to be effective. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it specifies yeah. town of East Troy yeah. when you start. Yeah. Like, uh, so yeah. you review the road, so County J, half of it's 55 and half of it is. Part of it's 35, part of it's 45. 45 she's 45 Farm yeah. by lake 35 yeah. 55 for the last two miles you come to start having yes it's all 45 until you get to st peter's road and then the 35 which by the fire okay st yeah. peter's road to the village limits 35 which, and then 45. by the state back in 2017 i do believe it was any when this happened then if it was a county road under 35 that brought the county road in the plate right because it was automatic then okay all right and then County L uh, is twisted and turned. Yeah, and that's <laughs> like J55 and 45 and 35. Mm -hmm. all, all right. And then you got a little bit Highway mm -hmm. I, which you can't get anywhere because the dead ends at Waukesha County Line. <coughs> and Highway E, the, the also dead ends at Waukesha County Line. Right. And there is an allowance in the law, I believe, that says we can post ATVs for a slower speed than vehicles. However, that brings in another safety element. Now you have a slower moving vehicle impeding traffic. Impeding traffic. So that's kind of a challenge here to regulate. So, all right, Michelle, you need to take the name. I guess, Chief Berkey, can you help me understand them as far as you said it's a DNR issue? Is that, but it's still enforced by our local police officers? Yeah, that would be correct. We are we are able to then subject to issue all DNR violations. Tickets are right. Police officers have some limitations uh, different than the sheriff's department. The sheriff's office is automatically considered a DNR warden by statute and can enforce all warden laws, shooting from the road, traffic, that type of thing where we're a little bit more limited, but as far as enforcement for voting, uh, snowmobile, recreational vehicles, ATVs, UTVs, we have the full authority to act just in the work. <clears throat> All right. All right. Uh, does the board feel confident that we have enough discussion? Is there any more input with her you know that potentially we can get any input on UTVs? Not? No. We should uh, vote on this. And I can see I'll make a motion that we uh, allow DBW to put up ATV signs on county roads, hopefully to start for July 1st, 2023. I'll second. Uh, Michelle, second. Okay. Um, I don't see any more further discussion here unless somebody wants to right now. If not, any question, no call vote. Uh, the motion is by uh, Chad to uh, time to allow ATVs on county roads. No, to allow DPW. DPW to put, put signs. Put signs, which is in which turn is, is to allow ATVs on the roads. Thank you. It's in our area. There are a lot of farmers that use them. They haven't. But is there a differentiation? I think the farmers and such automatically have the right to do that, regardless of whether or not we have the ordinance. Okay, uh, roll call vote. I have a question. Roll call vote starting. Wales, yes. Craig, yes. Bukowski, no. Church, no. Wilker, no. Bukowski, no. Craig, yes. 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 Craig, yes
I would suggest on this one, since it's got Tom White's significance, two ways to do this. One would be a ballot question on that, which always seems to be what we're aiming at. And I just mentioned before at the last uh, meeting when this was discussed, it was column rules. Mm -hmm. I think overall the safety issue and the enforcement issue that the chief brought up are very, very important. So that's going to be a no for now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, discussion of possible action on compost type fresh issue and very as this was just mentioned, yeah, I had a complaint and we checked with the DNR that God did. And we need a whole different permit to allow posting brush burning at that site. Yeah. And that permit requirement says that anybody within a quarter mile has to approve. Yeah. Everybody within a quarter mile. Everybody approved. If one person holds out. Yeah. So how many people would that be? Twelve. Yeah. Well, well, you you know, out, see. yeah, it doesn't seem that far, but you got everybody right across the road, you have the neighbors down there. When you draw the circle around the house, it's like where actually it's at. Wow. Yeah. yeah, when we did that uh, deal, the first time we the permit, uh, we had to show the wells in this, and we had to do that same thing. We had one foot of our also. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, at that time, it, yeah. bring, it brings the airport into play. Everything. So the question is really not is whether we're going to do it or not. The question is how we're going to handle it. Um, the people deserve to have a service. Actually, this affects ten thousand people because the village of East Troy uh, pays us a certain amount. The village, I just got a call from them with them last week, and their line to people is yard waste only. It isn't about brush and branches yeah. for the village stickers. Yeah, the village has never been able to bring brush. Okay, no. so it's just our, it's just the town people, so it affects yeah. 4,100 people. <laughs> and we heard, and as I know, I mean, I take some brush. But yeah. you know, <laughs> the problem is with brush is it takes quite a while to break down. And if you don't do anything with it to break it, to help break it down, like chipping, it takes how many years, roughly? Yeah. 10, 20? Yeah. This pine yeah. could be 20 years. Right? Uh, so that service, again, is an expectation from the town the residents that, hey, if I need a place to go without a yard waste, but brush and brush on your own property is rough. What do you do? Keep building piles for your. Raccoons <coughs> and porcupine, not porcupines, uh, skunks, on the wood junk. Well, because most right. people, possums, most people right. can't burn it right. because we made an ordinance when I first got on that you can only have a fire so, so big. So yeah. there's people that can't even have a campfire because everything's too close, which is correct. Right? So correct. There's most people can't even burn it on their own property. Right. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Yeah, we, okay. didn't, we did not need a permit up until we were forced to get the composting. We did it for 20 plus years. Right. Does it save time and money for the town? Because I figured I went through and I figured it all with our latest um, DOT numbers on what it would cost every time that compost site is open. It costs the town $1,110.57. Um. Because you would have to have it manned one person out there for the whole time that it's open so that. Because you can only, you're only allowed to bring a certain size brush in, and so that it's not jammed in somebody's trailer with a skidster, and it would take us two days to ship it. So it's the cost of one guy sitting out there um, for five hours, um, but then a labor for three of us to go out there, run it through our chipper, the cost of the chipper fuel, and the cost of the chipper itself, because there's a monetary value to that, the truck to haul the chipper out there, and the truck for the extra guy to get out there. That's where this figure came off. And, okay, so this is a per occurrence? Per occurrence. So what is the annual cost? 17, this year would be $17,769.12 because it's open 16 times this year. Right, so that's an additional cost uh, this is above and beyond what you normally staff it at. Yeah. Okay, this is not 
This is not in. This is in addition to what you would normally would do. Yeah, because when we were when we were able to burn it, we'd have one guy out there an hour, hour and a half. He would sit there until it burned down to a little pile. Um, what happened back on May seventh? The wind changed. The pile was burned down. It got really windy and it blew it into the leak pile, the start of the leak pile. Um, I was called by our police officer. He told me fire was this or fire department was dispatched out there. I got out there at the same time that or roughly after the police officer was there and told him, oh, we can cancel the fire department, we can handle it. We took our loader out there, we spread it all out, and that was out. And we went back out there on Monday, stirred it all around, made sure it was out. All right. So really our question here is we want to continue a service for our people. Or we don't. But right now, after that happened, it's about three weeks that it's been accepted. No. Uh, this will be the third week. And we, we've had signs made. We have cameras out there, and we still have people dropping off material a little brushing while everything's posted. Yeah. It's, been, it's on the website. On the roadside? Huh? On the roadside? No, at the council site itself. Even though know, there's three signs out there, there's cameras. It's on the websites. It's everywhere. If somebody's not there babysitting it. This happens. You state you made the comment that because we got the compost permit, now we need the burn permit. Yes. I, once why? once this was all brought to my attention, I called the state and I said, "Is it with our composting permit? Can we burn with it?" It was a hard no. You need a burning permit issue. So, the separate permit. so when we applied for the compost permit, was there like an option to check for burning or not? No. Or no. compost? Yeah. Uh, Again, co compost by definition, if you chip up wood and compost that, even though it's used as what do you want to call it? Uh, mulch. Mulch, mulch. Mulch. That's still considered part of the process of compost. Now, some of the compost, some of the chips you could compost, some of the finer stuff I'm sure you could, but you're not going to sort it. But we're saying it's going to be 18000 bucks a year or more to do this. And the question we have is are we going to continue it? But I guess it doesn't necessarily mean that when we were burning before the compost permit, it was still legal. Right? We didn't know until we got forced so to it's not like permit. We, we could burn. It's like we were burning, yeah. but now it's been brought to our attention. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. we acted on that. Permit is required. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But again, with, with without the initial permit, there is no requirement for a second burning permit. It wouldn't have been a requirement. The question is, is how we got there. We got there because it was a request. We did it. Yeah. Okay. And the NR said, you may apply for a permit. We said, we're going to do it. We decided. So, and, so, and, and, you know, potentially, if you want to reduce that cost, maybe instead of right. having the compost that open for five hours, it's only open for three hours. And <laughs> I, I'm just saying that if this is if this is something the residents want, and it's going to be a cost to the township on taxes, and we want to bring that down, Maybe we limit that service a little bit. Instead of taking it completely away, we limit it to bring that cost down. And also, like Mr. Jones had mentioned, that people, you know, will likely, some people will likely take the chips, you know, for the you know, wrong tree. Tom and Trace will run under my house by the truck. Well, yeah. Okay. yeah, so that, that part could probably come down a little bit too. But regardless here, we're still talking, you know, even if we reduce the bar, we're still talking about, like, say, 15 grand a year. I did some checking into, it was back in 2008, we had a straight line windstorm come through and had lots of damage. And the compost site was open for days on end for everybody to bring brush out. Tom and Troy had no place to bring it out. We had SNR compost bring out their big tub grinder. And it took two loaders out there one full day with two people. Just loading that as fast as we can to chip it up. Looking at the amount of brush that we get in, we would have to chip that every time it's on there because we get the amount. I checked with SNR compost to do it like full, maybe four times a year because of the 16 times, like quarterly when it's open. Each time they come out, it would be 7,500 plus still one guy in the loader. Yeah. 
So what we're going to be doing this ourselves. Yep. If we decide yeah. to do that. Well, that's, well, that was going to be my question. I thought, you know, all the years that you've been here, uh, it gets used. There's brush. You're, yeah. I mean, you're burning it X amount of times a year because the pile is starting to get big. Yeah. It would be um, once a month we do it because there's so that much brought in. Um, the, and, that, and I guess if, if it's under discussion here, that's what I was trying to say about, or maybe it didn't make sense, was with burning it. Uh, I, th I think we're kind of forced into doing this, A, because it, it's getting such use, and B is we have ordinances now that you can't, you can only burn so much stuff, only so big, and and you can't be within, what I forget the foot is, but of anything combustible, so like your pier or your boat house or your another tree, so a lot of people can't even have a campfire under the ordinance. We sure as heck can, I don't think, and expect people to not have a one way at least to burn it to get rid of it, but they can't do that. So I think we're into I think we're into this whether we like it or not. Jim, you did a for I did. My question was when you discussed uh, burning, did the issue of landfill site come up and did they say your days of burning there are did not over. then did not even after I told it. It was an okay. old yeah. Well it was what an acre and a half out of the 40 acres? Yeah, I mean, an acre out of 40 acres. Um, it's in the corner, which probably wasn't even in the footprint of the old landfill. So, so. But what I'm hearing is you're not looking at burning, you're just looking at. No, no, I don't think that's worth, cost. worth the, uh, for the effort to go that way. What? And, and why? Yeah, it's not going to happen to get everybody to agree with no. that quarter mile. No, no, it's not going to happen. And then you also got a $500 initial fee and $160 a year to keep the permit. Well, that's another nice Kim, it sounds like we have an unbed, unbudgeted expense of eighteen thousand dollars. Is that problematic in our budget at this time? It would. I mean, it would fall under the DPW's current budget, but it would take resources away from other areas. Yeah. But what they're able to do, I mean, they might be able chipping when they could be mowing. It's going to take three guys not doing something else. Road work, park work, out of the equation for three hours every other week, at least. Okay. All right. Everybody satisfied with the discussions? Thank you. Question then is we're doing this year, the action, what action are we going to take? I'll make the motion that we uh, reopen the compo site back to the septic brush and have the EPW do the work to create wood chips. Michelle, second. Discussion? Anyway. Go Sorry, it just came to mind with other things that are going on here. You know, we're saying that within a quarter mile it's not going to happen. Should we at least try? No. I mean, we're asking for private well, roads. Already know, already already know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. already know the answer. It so doesn't yeah. mean you don't try. We're asking people to for snow plowing to do it for, and to be all in. What don't you think we should at least give it a shot before we? Well, the, the, the one lady that had a complaint, we changed our process. I wrote a memo to the DPW that said, here's the conditions that we can burn. You know, with wind, wind speed, yeah. direction, whatever. Yeah, we even put a wind sock out there to make sure that it's yeah. going to go towards Yeah, that's when the uh, property owner, do West, yes. uh, said that we're going to start their hay barn on fire. Yeah. Okay, because flying embers. Yeah. And you know, the stuff we were burning was brushed that one time we were getting rid of some some of the papers for the ballots or something the old ballots. Yeah, when I for every election I order a certain number of ballots, I was over ordering. Yeah. Don't want to run out. And those extra ballots could be destroyed after eleven days. Right. And how so they were added to the brush pile. Yeah. I think now that's gonna be a shredding operation. And if I remember correctly, one of the residents out there already hired attorney Gray on the burn issue. Yep. I believe I did get a letter where we did get a letter. Yeah, it was the same. So she'll never agree. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> thank you for answering my question. But my question was, is do we attempt it by asking people to do for yeah. private roads to plow? Yeah, that's like I, to try. I kind of put in my thing that I know it's not going to happen because I, I didn't know like, why. There's no complaint from one lady. Thanks. Okay, all right, so um, 
Do we have a motion that we shall second? Uh, I have a motion all favor to say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, the last item you had was the resurfacing of the front steps. Yep. Uh, we had some ARPA money left. And with redoing the doing concrete out here for the building, the flat part of the steps are starting to get chipped off. And those were done when I first started here, so probably 24 years ago. <laughs> they were they were done in my time. Yeah. Because we had Chapman. Chapman did it, yeah. yeah. So it's been so in the last 19 years. Last 19 years, yeah. Yeah, 19 years, one week. Thank you. <laughs> and we're going to, uh, with doing the approach to the road, we're actually going to try and eliminate one step out of there because the road's going to come up a little bit. Um, so I got in contact with a couple of different companies for putting a treatment on, almost like you do with a garage door. They would seal it up. They would fix up the, the little cracks and everything. Um, and then the only thing would be we would pour the new cement going out there, we'll eliminate that stuff and meet the, the new road. Um, we got a cost, I like, uh, 45 Yeah. Then this would seal it up, they'd fix it all. Yeah. They would fix it all and they put a hand size slip agent in it. It's actually, it's not, it's, it's a polymer that they put on there. It's not just like a paint. And it has the grip and the traction in it to make it taste yeah. good. And some of you have, may have seen the sample. Yeah. It's in the office. You're saying you're redoing the stoop itself. The stoop. The yeah. Redoing yeah. it. Yeah. And then they and then they would the whole thing. Look, I was when I was reading it, I was wondering if it was like a top coat patch. Yeah. No, they they, they would kind of so grind. They grind like a, I think they said like eighth or sixteenth inch off, so it bonds bonds to it. But the whole stoop is going to be the whole stoop, so and then the once we do the no, 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 the whole stoop's not going away. No, it's being ground, ground, the where it's been chipped off, they'll, they'll resurface it and then seal it all up. So it's being squared off again, yeah, instead of all the chip and the right. it's being patched, yeah. and then uh, but it's not going to make the steps that much shorter, no, not at all. They, they're they changed by, yeah, and then it would be coated all the way out to the road once that. Or we would do the, the new flat work down on the, where you lock off the steps that are open. Do we need to confirm that this computer is not compliant with that building inspection? Just because they do seem kind of steep. We have the ramp. We have the ramp. Yeah, we have the ramp out back for you. Well, still, there's still still runs on stairs that you should actually do. We passed state inspections with our ADA compliance, so we are completely ADA compliant with that ramp. With the ramp. Right. Yes, but I'm saying, like, in the door, when you're in a building, you sure. have your stairs have to be a certain. Right. If someone I'm slips not. and falls, right. and they and it suggest that Tom was negligent because it's not up to like, right. building stairs. code standards. You can just ask Vince to confirm it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can do that. All right, and this is from Wisconsin Concrete Coding with other comment. Yeah, they were, the, they were the only ones that would do it because. Everybody else is like for garage boards. They want a big area. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't ask about tearing it out and replacing it. We never got any bids like that. It'd be probably a whole lot more than what we spent any resurface. So. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what this new stuff is, but I know patching. It's patching. It's not fixing. So I just I don't know how long it lasts. I don't know you know what the life expectancy is on it. That's all I'm asking. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so it was just brought to my attention because of the face and the corners and all that chip and all fall apart to possibly get either resurfaced. Or mm -hmm. And would you be able to clutch us for a third railing? Yep, that's the only thing I haven't got the price on. We're going to try for the third rail in the middle just to help because our generation many, isn't getting any younger. Yeah, and I see many on election day, I see many people go over to the edge. Mm -hmm. Things crack. So if we get one in the middle, yep. it'll be safer. That, that's not including no. the railing is not. <laughs> yeah, we have. This is the surface that we treated a lot more slippery. And with a darker color with the sun. But I'll help us know how you talk to the 
And that, that's just it too. The, the this, the salt doesn't bother it. It's just like a, like a gravel. Mm -hmm. Okay, any more discussion? If not, we need a motion to approve the contract. I'll make the motion we approve the quote from Wisconsin Concrete. Wisconsin Concrete Coating, the common lot for $4,550 for the square surface You want to make that contingent on the square contingent on the inspection. Air trade requirements. Rise and trade okay. requirements. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second? Any discussion? Do we have all pairs say aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. None. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. That's it. All right. That's it. All right. Please report to Chief Garanke. <coughs> Uh, for the month of May, we had a total of 800 exactly uh, calls for service, and then for the year uh, 3618. Um, I don't know if anybody had any questions? I know I can get that to you a little later. Yes. Um, I know the Alpine Valley people had their cell phones that were calling the uh, 911 system and tying it up. Uh, they had the cell phones in their pocket, and because of the velocity of coming down the hill and seeing the abrupt stopping, it was dialing 911. Are you aware of any problems that we've had like that? No, I know. Uh, talking with Todd last week, my my cell service through Verizon was less than stinky. Um, if you can get less than stinky, um, and it was due to some upgrades that were going on, apparently by Eagle. Uh, I noticed uh, today that problem appears to have been eliminated. So I'm assuming whatever upgrades they were. Doing Verizon was doing their job. They also were doing it at uh, 120 <clears throat> and I-43 5G installation, and they did take out the uh, intermediate antennas to do that. So, yeah, they're done now. Yeah, so that that's back up and running. Geez, so about a third of the calls, 270 of 800, are extra patrol. Yeah. So could you remind yeah. me what that means again? Uh, extra patrol would be uh, anything that's put into uh, as a complaint. So uh, with uh, construction, we got a lot of complaints for uh, Storm School Road, Bell School Road, extra, extra patrols. Um, those are put into the system. And uh, when you guys check on those, or they're going to sit and run radar, um, they can click on that uh, extra patrol in there. And then we have a way of tracking it. So if one of the residents called and said, I haven't seen a squad out here ever running radar, I can look and say, well, it appears we've sat up there 10 times in the last five days, so we're we're doing it. The guys are checking the box. I'm sorry you're not seeing it. Thank you. All right. And then what I wanted to have just a discussion and kind of bring it up to you folks. I'm talking to the chiefs from around the area, and... Um, a lot of them have gone with a company by the name of Municipal Code Enforcement. Um, it's a local business. Um, it was started by Shannon Markley, um, who worked for, not sure which building inspector or zoning, but she understands and knows building code slash zoning code slash ordinances inside and out and uh, has been very effective with the following communities. Town of Delavan, City of Delavan, Williams Bay, Fontana, Elkhorn, Sharon, and Mostyn. I know there's more on the list. I know that Geneva Township is looking at working with this company. Um, they contract and they take a look at your ordinances and uh, and they are a complaint-based company. So somebody has, uh, 
zoning violation or a uh, code violation. They would kind of tag the police department <coughs> in. However many hours we would potentially use this company a week, we would forward these complaints to them. They would investigate them. They would send the letters and they would cite them. No longer the police department. Which these people know zoning law. I don't have a clue about zoning law. Uh, I don't have a clue about how some of the codes that we have on the books. But because I am the police department and the police chief, everybody, I'm kind of a one-stop shop. And that is not something I am not I want to say I'm not interested in, but that's a lot of homework and a lot of reading and a lot of stuff and a lot of educating that there's people out there that do this for a living and don't charge you an arm and a leg. And when I spoke with Shannon, she was going to try and email me a sample proposal. Um, but as an example, she started with the town of Delavan at two and a half hours a week, simply complaint based. So if there was a week where there's no complaints, she's not just coming here to collect her two and a half hours of time. But if there is a complaint, she would have two and a half hours to investigate the complaint, write the, the letters, make contact with the, the homeowner, do whatever. And what she thought out in Delavan Township was two and a half hours in a month wasn't enough time, and I think they've offered her to five hours a week. But it is strictly a complaint-based um, type of contract, and uh, there's a wide range, and I just wanted to talk about it and put it on your folks' radar so hopefully next month um, Shannon and Kyle can get me a sample of contract that I can present to you uh, for consideration. Very good. How often is that coming up today? And would this relate to all the peer variance requests or? Not, not necessarily peer variance. It has more to do with ordinances, our code ordinances, and I'm getting calls for zoning. That's, that's oh, that's the that's county. That, yeah. that, goes, that goes to the county where they would be able to guide us on this and make sure, number one, that our codes, ordinance codes are compatible with kind of what everybody else is doing and, and what everybody else has on the books um, and is enforcing. We can't enforce county zoning right. violations. So I'm not sure. This would have limited. It would be ordinance. It would be uh, the town ordinances. But she understands the zoning part of it. So we don't have to necessarily call the way because she understands the law and where it's a code violation versus a zoning issue type thing is where I'm looking at it. Jean? So a couple of things that are happening right now. It's, it's you know, the ongoing junk ordinance, um, but like the noxious weeds. I've been sending out weed ordinance, you know, noxious weeds, you need to mow, that kind of thing. That would be something that this would apply to. They would, you know, we get the complaint that, hey, Joe Blow on, you know, X road has a bunch of thistles and noxious weeds needs to be mowed. And it wouldn't, they would it, enforce it. It wouldn't look like if we were picking on somebody in particular, it would be this person got a anonymous complaint that I've got thistles in my yard this high, you know. And, and again, so that's just one example. There, there are, and I did in a, a few, again, I don't know the day. Just selling that, and I'm not quite sure the name you mentioned, if I recognize that, but there's several out there, but it would be nice to see kind of what the contract would look like. So. And the reason that they came to mind is because they're local and they're working with so many other of our other uh, communities in Waller County. So if, they, if they're doing bad, I would think I would know. <laughs> are they licensed attorneys? They're not attorneys. Well, how are they supposed to prosecute a case in our hands? They're, right, they're going to do tracks and writing tracks through the, the police department system. Right. So they're, they're right, issuing the citations from code officer, whatever. The so are they not having any court appearances? No, nope, they're I think they're having some court appearances based on what so the I'll still people. be prosecuting those. Yes, they would be town ordinances, a hundred percent. So on your CAD summary that you gave yes. 
would that fall under the municipal code on uh, page two? Is that the kind of CAD documentation that this company would address? Page two under the CAD summary report. It says Muni Code. And Are you talking about the CAD summary? CAD yeah. 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 Okay, we're categories as municipal code. Okay, some of those you're saying could potentially have been diverted to county if they were remained in the zone? They, they very well could have been. I know the one that I uh, <laughs> talked to somebody about, I'm like, that is that is zoning, that is not me. So, so like, okay, okay. my neighbor has 20 yeah. jump vehicles in his car, and I'm probably underestimating that number. And it's been to county. County hasn't done anything. So this person would be that mediator, mediator <laughs> that would help get the process going. Yes, the expert basically in that field. But they would have to be given authority. They would be acting on behalf. They would not be, just like the building inspector. It would be a contract, contract, contract service. I guess I need to Same know like more about it before I can weigh in. I think the contract adds a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I'm going to get the, I talked to her on Friday. Uh, today is Monday. She didn't, she didn't give me a sample. I'm expecting that by next month I will have had another phone conversation with her and get you a sample. So we all can see what the prices are because I don't know what the prices are. Maybe the communities that I mentioned, City of Elkhorn, Town of Delvin, City of Delvin, pay exorbitant fees and it's not feasible to hire somebody like that. But I wanted to talk about it and get it out there so next month it's not the first time that you've heard me uh, discuss it. Along with it, if you could bring samples, yeah, them would be helpful. <clears throat> yeah, and and that talking with uh, Miss Markley, she made it very clear up front. They don't drive around looking for stuff. They're solely uh, complaint based response. Yes, absolutely. All right, we one, one, one last question. Yes, we made it through the Memorial Day holiday weekend. Can you give us a little? Vote to control review? Um, sure, I can give you. Uh, I know the vote was out. I know that um, they wrote a, a couple warnings. We had some as expected, and I had talked about some personnel um, snafus uh, that are unavoidable. Not any, uh, not a situation of no call, no show. Uh, so we ended up with a couple of vote patrols. Uh, with a single officer on the boat, and that boat went out anyways, understanding that when we're out and we're only one person on the boat and you're you're pretty limited as to what you do, you're more to respond to an emergency than to start stopping uh, boats and sighting. So boats were being stopped, but they were being given warnings and told not to not to do that. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Memorial Day went went really well. And I know that um, talked to Lieutenant Bundy about switching up some hours. The uh, nighttime slowing awake on weekends seems to be a hot topic uh, at the moment that uh, Scott and I had a discussion today about. So we'll be looking at that. I appreciate those officers out there, even as a single person, because just being out there and being seen you know, does right. make it does make a difference. I noticed then when if you're not able to make it out. And, and I, I would I would hate to uh, guess, but my understanding is in years past, um, I would say I'm getting a complaint, email complaint a day, maybe a week. I my understanding and what I was led to believe is in years past that was 
way more than one a week mm -hmm. for the league. So I'm kind of pretty happy on wood here that we're going in the right direction and people are seeing in us and that'll continue. So okay. thank you very much. All right, thanks. All right, uh, East Trey Area Emergency Services District. Um, East Troy Area Fire and Rescue Department responded to three fire calls in the town and 21 calls for emergency medical services in the month of April. Um, one thing that I would like to draw attention to is right now um, everywhere has a critical need for blood. The fire department will be hosting a blood drive on June 24th at the firehouse from 8 to 1. I encourage you to call for an appointment and help those in need. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Park Committee report. Um, as Jen mentioned, the high school class came with the lunch. Um, and I was <laughs> looking into our $3,000 budget, but um, got an update from Tom tonight that we may have some compliance issues on the equipment that we have kind of coming to the end of its life. So um, we'll have to have further discussions around what um, corrective repairs need to be completed and what budget. Play, play, play on equipment? Yes. <coughs> So yeah, we were going to look into, but they're they're coming. Yeah. Whereas we were going to look into, yeah, if we can do something with grills or clean up or yeah. so. It'll be good to understand the big picture. All right, uh, Booth Lake Memorial Park report. Super Wales. Um, yeah, uh, the park looks absolutely great. Uh, things are going very well. I go by there about twelve times a day. It seems. Uh, and uh, it seems like it's been really busy. I know they're opening weekend. Sean and Bonnie said it was in the last day of school. Like all of a sudden, it was yeah, so so the school's out. So um, that's a great thing. A lot of people are using the park. Um, we're doing music at uh, last Fridays of the month there, from six to nine. Um, they're doing paddleboard rentals and kayaks. They've done, but they got a couple paddleboards. So there's more things. They said that's been going very well. Um, there's other information on the website for Booth Lake. That uh, feel free to go on to, but um, a lot of good things happen. Thank you very much. Lake Beale of the District Report. Good, Thomas, anything? Um, I really don't have a report, but I would like to uh, reiterate what uh, the opposition of the, both the Lake Beale Management District and the Lake Beale Protection as a proof of association has with the dredging. Uh, both organizations are not in favor. Okay. And they both have representatives for that the yeah. public hearing, which was great. Okay, uh, recycling committee report. Yeah. Uh, yes, the uh, recycling committee um, filed for the responsible unit contact and we have the announcement of the 2023 recycling grants. Uh, our total grant uh, this year was $14,816.80. And uh, special thanks to Tim Buchanan, the clerk treasurer, for compiling this report and filing. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Anything from the library? Uh, yes, from the library. Number one, uh, well, I should say first, this is the library board minutes from 9 May 2023. Uh, number one, the Friends of East Troy Lions Public Library is again active with elected officers, and the group is now looking into bylaws. Number two, the board approved updated social media policy. Number three, the board approved moving some library funds to higher interest bearing accounts. Number four, the board approved accepting net tax bench donation from 4-H valued at $350. And number five, approved accepting gaming monitor 
and two black leather glove seats, subject to condition. And uh, the gaming monitor is in new condition, by the way. And uh, number six, a reminder of the Walworth County Administrative Meeting on June 20th at 6 p.m. So that's going to be a pretty good meeting to attend if you're there with it. I believe all three boards will be there. Yes. And uh, please thank Christina for the. Uh, okay, will do. Right, plan commission report, Supervisor Walker. Uh, there are four items for board consideration and approval this evening. <clears throat> the first is the Planning Commission's request a motion for the Town of East Red Board to approve a land separation CMS at North 9033 and North 9025 Army Lake Road, East Troy, Wisconsin, PA 2604002. No, PA one more zero zero two PA two six zero four zero 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 three and PA three two two five zero 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 four dash mark twenty six oh four. These are a um, land separation to separate and redistribute land according to the estate and final wishes of Audrey No. The, com the commission noted that all parcels are conforming and wetlands are, wetlands are delineated as presented in the CMS and as outlined in the Town of East Troy Ordinance 17.2 land division procedure for a minor, for a minor land division of not more than four parcels, any one of it, each is 15 acres or less. Seeking your motion to, uh, to, uh, to approve this motion. Okay, so you get a motion to approve the resolution from the planning commission. We have a second. I'll second. All right, we have a second discussion. Are you, does this become like a it has multiple houses on it. Is it like a subdivision or? The, there are two existing homes that were included in this land division. Okay. It is, it's not technically a subdivision. Okay. Or a, a homeowners association. Okay. I guess since it's a CSM would be considered a minor subdivision, which is how they do those. But they basically had, uh, they're, they're separate just because of the, Basically, it will. All right. Any further discussion? If not, uh, on the motion, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Second item is a conditional use amendment rezone request for board approval. It is request continuous use amendment and zoning request. It was presented to the Planning Commission for the property of the camp, uh, Beaver Camp, at West 172, I'm sorry, West 1741, County Road J, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Parcel number PET 400007 and PET 400008 and PET 50003 and PET 50006, parenthesis 6C, 10 and 11. Um, in essence, the uh, Beaver Camp staff are rezoning, requesting to rezone two R1 properties, making them C2 properties. Um, it's a technicality that the County Zoning Administration requested and the Planning Commission reviewed given the history of the camp in the community and the presence of a well-defined and delineated master plan, we approved, seeking your approval as well. Is there a catch on the, the resolution has a uh, correct amount of zeros in it. So if you're voting to approve the resolution, that's fine. <coughs> Okay, um, so you made the motion to approve that one from Beaver Camp. We have a second. I'll second. Or a second discussion. Um, isn't uh, most of the property zone C? Is C2, they, yes. 
they're, they're done they're, they're, converting they're, from R to C2. Yes, they are. So it's more continuity. There is greater continuity by making it C2 versus residential. Yes. Uh, Good thing. Yeah. All right, further discussion? Okay, and motion to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion to approve. <clears throat> the uh, next uh, resolution before you is uh, a motion for the town board to approve conditional use request as stated for West 1184 County Road L, East Troy, Wisconsin, PET 50, sorry, PET 1500005B. Um, this is a, a existing business that is expanding its business within permitted A4 property uses. Uh, they want to initiate uh, canning operations and uh, the county wanted us to uh, be aware of it, discuss it and approve it. Um, the company is already um, FDA licensed facility. We'll seek Department of Health and Natural Resources and Department of Agriculture and Consumer Protection licenses as warranted for these canning operations. So this is my motion for board approval. And it is an A4 property, not A2. Okay, that's a third, fourth paragraph, one, two, three, four, A4, not A2? Yes. Okay. And that is correct. I'll second. All right, we have a second discussion. Hearing none, all on the motion to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion to approve. The final item for your consideration this evening is a motion for the town board to approve variance request at, um, as stated at West 962 Sherwood Road in East Troy, Wisconsin. P.S. Sherwood Drive. East Sherwood Drive, East Troy, Wisconsin. P.S. 00042 Lot 42. Um, in this request, we have a setback issue for the um, 75 foot setback issue, which is resolved by a method um, known as shoreline averaging. And using such an averaging, the setback requirement is satisfied. Um, the setback, the house is actually 75 feet back, but it's extended porch area and the screen and porch area is only 63 feet. But using shoreline averaging, um, the location of the building is acceptable. Again, this is a 50 foot or a non-conforming property. So they also have setback issues for both neighbors who each signed a letter of support for the location of the new house between their existing houses. So setback should be 10 feet. Um, they will be slightly less. Uh, I believe on the neighbor, the neighbor at the west currently is only inches off the property line and with this new house, the setback will increase to uh, 14 feet and with the neighbor on the east uh, their current the house does not currently at all uh, set, set side by side they're moving their house forward so there will be only a, a 15 to 70 foot setback which the planning commission felt was reasonable given the lot size and the configuration of other homes along Southwood Drive Sure. 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 Okay, so that's your motion? Yes. We have a second. Second. All right, second. Discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we need that public comments. Now we have unfinished business update. On East Troy Railroad Museum Bridge on Beach Road. Uh, we did get a response back from. Uh, I did. Um, he said he has not yet had a chance to review the 
attached agreement with the board of directors and did discuss it with the executive committee. A question in sections four, eight, and nine, most regarding um, the fiscal costs. Um, and he concluded, you need to have a reliable cost projection and a specific limitation on the museum's financial obligations in connection with the transaction. In any event, we should await the determination on our congressionally directed spending request application before taking further action on the matter. So okay, two things changed on this. But first of all, with earmarks, there's no guarantee that we have to actually say you got it. I heard three different dates, can't confirm it with uh, Senator Baldwin's office. Um, I don't think we can wait, that's number one. Number two, I did forward an email to the board about, uh, I believe it was from Tim Lynch, about the DOT has, has a change in policy that may help us here. Uh, and I'm not sure it's a change, even though it's not mentioned regularly. You can uh, apply for a bridge replacement uh, with a sufficiency rating of 50, which we're at, okay, not a higher number. Uh, if the rehabilitation report shows that indeed it's not going to need rehabilitation, it needs replacement. So there is an avenue to, to have. I don't think we're at 50 yet. Right. Uh, well, the number, okay, the number that we need. We have right now the this program. Okay, so I'm going to, with the board, unless the board objects, I'm going to have another discussion with their CEO to say, all right, we did get a response back from your attorney. Did your board even weigh in with his response? Because I've been told that. <coughs> and number two, tell him that we really should wait here with this because it doesn't matter whether we rehab or replace the bridge. We still need that agreement, that basically that sales agreement that transfers that ownership because you cannot get a grant without that ownership. So I want to I want to, I want to do those two things, and I do think that you know we can probably plan on adding this again next month to force some action. I that. think it should be added every month because I agree we cannot wait to do it. The funding that may be available this year. Right, but they, the, tr the funding that's available right now with this newest version, if you want to call it that, tells us that we have to do it now. Okay. 100% uh, um, federal grant for this is what would make this issue a non issue. Okay, because we all know we're going to own this bridge in the future. We just don't want to be held liable for something we don't own now. And that's their same problem. They also said they don't know the numbers. They don't know the numbers either. You have to get to that point unless we hire somebody to do that. And I'm not for that right now, other than potentially I could get a little help from Lynch and Associates at least put some more clarity to it so that could be sent to our boards, theirs and ours, to maybe move this train a little bit because right now that train is stuck. Didn't they offer to help write the uh, grant? Well, any, oh, any expenses yeah. that would happen that we're sure. sharing equally mm -hmm. and the grant would be a cost. But uh, everything we've done so far is 50-50 and you know I did tell them that uh, that is not an automatic. Okay. The last time that bridge was replaced in 1980, the town paid for the approaches, not the bridge. Okay. Now, it did come out to a fairly substantial number because we had a acquired real estate. Okay. But if we pay this for the approaches, it's going to be 20, 25% of that bridge versus 50%. And you know that too, I told you. So, if the board doesn't have an objection, I will continue contact with Danny Baldwin as well as the CEO. Yeah. We have to authorize you to do that. Well, I think I've already been previously authorized, but right. I think Jim, you think we're okay here? Uh, I would make a motion to okay. just make sure it's continuing. I make a motion to authorize it 
Chairman Klarkowski to continue to pursue uh, ownership of the Beach Road Bridge with the East Troy Railroad Museum, uh, as well as funding with uh, ten involvement projects. Okay. Second. Uh, we have a second by Bill. Okay, question. Bill. Yeah. Um, when we met with the railroad, wasn't Walworth County's Richard Huff mm -hmm. very supportive of us replacing that bridge? Is there any way that he could again uh, impart his okay. position with the with the railroad? Uh, potentially. Is because he did this with another bridge in the town of Lynn. Uh, that was a little cleaner than this one. Uh, but I could make that have you know, that discussion too. Uh, but what Tim Huff, Mr. Huff has mentioned is that since when the federal grants are allocated and the bridge money goes to Walworth County, this bridge will be number one on the list. You said that, right? I know. Right. That's why I wanted to. He also said it has to be. Well. Correct. Yeah. That's key. That's why we I'm have to own it. wondering if he can't help implore the East Shore Railroad to come to terms okay. with us. Owning the bridge is imperative, yet we don't want to hold ourselves to a million dollars worth of repairs right. Right. when right. they certainly have some stake in it. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Questions? Hearing none, I'm motion to authorize me to continue that discussion. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, uh, review and approve snow plan contract draft cover letter for private road residents and schedule. It's kind of an all inclusive type of deal here. Uh, I want to say a couple things about this before we go into the meat of this. The actual resolutions that we've done, we've done it in 2016 in the previous one, so that's uh, seven years, and the previous one was 2010, I believe. Uh, so we were due for an update in the cost okay uh, and the cost that was mentioned in the letter uh, was 70 or the agreement, 74, sorry, dollars. 74 but that included administrative cost <coughs> for the uh, office staff our calculations say that if we continue with this it would be 70 dollars all right and a lot of that is inflation because we didn't do it since like I said, 2016. Um, so, you know, we're, we're due for that adjustment. Uh, the authorization we gave last <coughs> month to uh, Attorney Bell was to uh, change that letter and modify it as well as have a cover letter so that we were to send it to people with the tax bill and they would know um, what would be expected. The question came up, or I believe Supervisor Workman said, hey, the people that are most affected by this, they haven't been notified, and no input was, was uh, obtained from them. So that's kind of where we're at here. That the question is, is not as simple as the uh, taking brush and chipping. This one here is a continuous service that we're doing for 50 years. The concern was about the cost. We got that covered, and we also have the we had concern about the contract. Okay, and we have a contract. Okay, it's not a written contract. It's offer acceptance consideration, and I've been reading up statutes over the last 50 years to know that if the legislators wanted to say written contract, they would have said written contract. They said contract. Attorney Bill said there's a a possibility that if there's any litigation that a judge may interpret that statute to say, well, all contracts are written. So that's the thing we have to consider. The other thing we have to consider is, is you know, no. legal wise. I don't think they'll, a judge would say that, he okay. or she. Um, 
The language of the statute is what matters, and you're right, it does not say written in it. So I think we have some leeway, uh, but in terms of the waiver of liability portion of it, that would have to be more specifically approved by the resident. Right, so that that has been uh, what your stand was last last month, and we've had this on the agenda, I don't know, for how many months? It's been a lot. We do have, have a process now on how we come up with the cost, so we, we can defend that, you know. So the question is, what, what does the town board want to do with this long-standing service? Again, the service to the community. Uh, and the gentleman, the great here and now, he said, I pay taxes for everybody, like everybody else, and this is in addition to it. And if it's saying that, you know, that that's not enough, well, it's, it's enough now, okay? And like I said, a lot of that adjustment, uh, you know, was, you know, inflation too, you know, not all, it was 35 to 70, you know. So just doing the straight inflation calculation, $9 of that 35 is just inflation. The other part is, should we have done it you know, more often? Well, we have a, Policy and that policy the procedure now that says it'll be looked at budget time every year, okay. And we'll use this year, we're using a three year running average for events. Next year, we'll have another year of data, you know, this year or next year's data. So we will have the correct information to make this happen. So that's that's the question here. That before this, before this. I have a couple of concerns. First of all, we asked Shorewood Road to repair their road in order for it to be plowed. For us not to plow it because one person doesn't sign the contract is not fair to what we required Shorewood to do. The other thing is that the snow, on, the snow and ice on the road, it is going to make things worse for police, EMS, and fire. That is going to add to my maintenance cost of those vehicles. It is going to add to the time that it takes those vehicles to respond to an emergency. And we don't have the luxury of time in an emergency to take our time to get there. The last thing is we have volunteers who work on the fire and the rescue. I don't want to put the fire and the rescue at any more risk then we need to. The roads need to be plowed and we need to keep doing what we have been doing. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Bill? No. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, again, uh, as you reiterated, I'll reiterate with your point that uh, we've, we've not asked the residents affected by this. Uh, I saw 17 stand up saying they're opposed to this at Mr. Rice's request. Um, I've heard one person who does not live on a private road object to us doing this service. Um, I support the current policy of providing plowing and snow service to private roads, as well as charging a reasonable fee for those services. Again, I would note for my, for my outreach to people, um, that, We've been doing this for, you say, 50 years. I've heard 20 years. And I can't think of any claim for injury, death, damages that have resulted from the town services because, frankly, DPW is the best, and they're going to get it done. And I hope that we um, no longer entertain this proposal. Right. Well, uh, Dan corrected on the years we did this. The ordinances, or the resolutions that we did were 2008-16, and now we're considering 2023. So we're doing it on seven, eight year interval. Now we're going to be doing it annually. So, okay. Um, do you have anything to add? I don't think I should. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I don't know my, my, my whole, again, I've been told, oh, wait, you know, I don't like the idea of it, but I also don't like the liability for the township. It's, it's a very difficult thing to try to decide on. Okay. Uh, uh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. When that one thing does happen. 
By the way, our, our insurance agent did run a record. I asked this question specifically. Our, our DPW covered for plowing private roads? The answer is yes. So there is coverage. Okay. Uh, that, I did it right after the last meeting. We'll get that in writing? She did put it in writing. That we absolutely are covered yep. no matter what? Yep. Other. yep. You actually afforded it to the whole board if you didn't get it? I did not get that. Okay. Was, that's your name again? Michelle. 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 Michelle.
but that's how we got on there. That was my request. So there's some that could have not requested <clears throat> that the town didn't start automatically doing it. But that not how it happened. So um, I think there's more questions than we answered, but I don't see it. So, all right. Anybody have their shake at the cat over here? So my only question is, are we going to do the um, agenda item, or right. are we going to do nothing? Well, that's a question. One thing is to send it. There's three ways to do it. One way is to enact it. Two is to send to uh, the 259 residents and say, hey, we're not doing it next year in the winter of 23-24, but it could happen the following year. What do you think? We have nothing right now other than what we heard tonight. Well, the draft letter I sent for comments, I received zero comments from anyone, and it's not even a completed letter. Right. right. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So, yeah, my notes. Yeah. But I didn't get it. Uh, the completed version, what version of it where you asked how the cost was done? What was that? Right. Okay. Oh, I think we the last month. Were we going to do October? No, no, we can't do October. It has to be August 15th at the latest. That was my comment. Do it in July. Mail it in July. Come on back by August 15th. On the contract itself, item 1A. Is it a concern? Um, the resident notifies the town and writing that the service is no longer required. What if they decide to do that on December 15th? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what? I think that For the following year. I mean, we think, I think there has to be some kind of language in there to. Um, and then again, the dates in two, and then in that all capitalized final whole paragraph need to be changed. Those are the things I found. I'm sorry, repeat that. One A, I got that one. One A, and then in two, the date again, oh. and then in the final capitalized paragraph, the date again. Those are the things I had. But technically, we're oh. saying August 15th because that, that gives you time to follow up. Yeah. It gives us time to follow We're up going and get door it on to taxes. door, knocking on people's right. door. And yeah, that's why you did we it. Have, that's a nice weather show. Yeah, we <laughs> have some Sherwood Draft rock stars who already sent us the old contract. Yeah, that was a draft. But yeah, and people <laughs> asked me if they were going to be signing tonight. Um, yeah. And then the other thing was this um, at the bottom of this contract with waiver of liability language, there's nothing. That says that, Jim. So third line in the all capitalized paragraph at the bottom. Mm -hmm. That we turn the completed section at the bottom of this paragraph. Sure, number four. Waiver of liability language. Number four. Okay. The paragraph four is the waiver. Okay. Yeah. So they're not returning to the bottom. Returning the whole thing. Yeah. No, it's saying that the the waiver language is section four. It is such. Right, right. It's not a separate waiver. This is oh, a waiver. See. You see that language is obtuse in my mind? Return the completed section at the bottom of this contract with waiver of liability language. By, so it's the with waiver of liability language that is. Right, and um, that needs to be separated with commas or something. Else. Okay. That's not suggesting the no. waiver language is at the bottom of the page. Okay, right. Okay. So it is just includes or something. Right. Okay. The above. So it's just the length, the way it's written. Okay. Those were my those were my two cents. Good. And of course the PO box instead of the street address. Or we'll never get off. If I were to comment in the cover letter, I would ask that the third paragraph, please note, be bolded and underlined. Because if unless it's clear that Everybody's got to sign it and return it for the service ends. We're doing a disservice to the resident reading it. And we're sending this out for feedback. 
I don't know that we're sending it. Well, we didn't, we didn't decide that yet. We're either sending it out to feedback, we're sending it out to, to do it. So, <coughs> it do it as I was asked by a resident today how they could turn it in. I said that would be part of our communication with them, is ways that they could turn it in. Right. We need a motion then. So Tom, and I think we had a good showing here that I think at least there's awareness. Um, and I'm not sure what I All right, we need a motion. What percent participation? I'll make a motion that uh, we continue with our current practice and uh, if something comes up in the future here that changes that direction that we do it and also that we do ask for some feedback you know at tax time it could be this letter could be a different one make the people aware that this is being considered it may be possible something comes up here that is black and white that says we have to do it. So my motion is to continue uh, as a current practice. The charge will be for next year will be $70 per uh, unit. And uh, that's my motion. Second. Well, I'll turn second. Discussion. So does your legal opinion change because, because you talked to the insurance company? The whole thing is what hold, help, holds me up for the town being right. right. That's Without the having separately <laughs> looked at what our policy does or doesn't cover, it's still a lingering, lingering question for me, and it's always preferable that you have written waiver language somewhere. I wish it included that chance of waiver. The what? So my like my motion had the language there of revisiting. That could be a change. That could be something that would sure we motion is to do it this year the way we've been doing it. Motion is continuing as is. My concern is the liability for doing it this year without having something that they've already paid this year. You already what? They've already paid. No, no, no. They paid arrears until December thirty first of twenty twenty three. They have not paid starting January 1st. I've always been told it was for the season. No. No. That's what I tell. No. no. Assessment letters. I think you said that a month ago. I said that last month. Okay. All right. I guess I'm a little concerned that we, you know, put all this effort and attorney fees and all this effort. That's what we do on every issue. We study the hell out of it and do, everybody does their homework and you vote. That's. That's why we get elected, is to make a decision. And, you know, if something changes, my motion says we can revisit it. Kim, did you reread the motion, please? I can tell you. Um, Joe Klarkowski motion that we continue with current practices at $70 per unit, and we can revisit the topic as needed. Thank you. Our church second it. All right, roll call. Can we roll. continue? What? With the current practice, but you also through the new, yeah, the new rate. Well, we need a new resolution. Come in the fall, just like we do for the garbage charge. Right. We, we came up with the, with the number. The difference between what was in the potential contract included the administrative fee for the town. Without a change, there is no administrative fee per se, and our calculation shows seven. Okay, and like I said, the amount. The years that we did it, you know, for 2008, 2016, now this will be 2023. Going forward, we'll have a calculation <coughs> of time every year. So that is an improvement, and we have better data on the events and better data on the equipment costs. You know, so that's what it is. Okay, one following question. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Markowski, aye. Church, aye. Right, right. Wales will say I because Joe says we're insured. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just saying. Yeah. What was your vote, Michelle? I was maybe based on our attorney's advice. Okay. Which was? Is it yes or no? No. 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 Okay. Uh, Walker, yes. Okay. 
Okay, so motion carries for one. Uh, we're continuing with the current practice. The motion says if we have data or something that shows up to change this. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you guys. All right, uh, discussion and action and now we're going to First, I need to listen to YouTube testing and do you have coordination with, with Jim here? Because he thinks you heard before that it's ongoing. Yeah, I got an update from her last week yep, in response to the email. Um, and I guess that was my question. Primary question was now how are we going to follow up on that and get regular updates? Um, which she said she's going to provide the report. Um, I think there's still some handoff to be done um, from, between myself. And then, um, depending on yeah, how things proceed. And as we know, as we all know, uh, your committee had a recommendation, YouTube's had a recommendation yeah. on the record. Uh, this will hopefully help answer some of the questions uh, about that part of the platform. You know, well, uh, this the okay. testing. Right. It's, yeah. Which, it's, I think it, the offer to help with the testing still stands. Um, I think has been mentioned a couple times. Um, it, you know, the concern is people in the room or you know that have impacted it. I thought just now, which when I was up talking, heartbeat stopped because everybody was on their phone. I walked back, everybody was on their phone, and my feet stopped, so I had to restart. So I don't know how much of what I said actually went live. So unfortunately, that's just stated. It's the grant, the and if people are all showing, John has separated. Yeah, he doesn't have any issue. Because John is not streaming the show. If you are not streaming, you don't need broadband. With him recording, I mean, if you want me to stand here and do this with the camera and do my phone at the same time to record it, I'm happy to do that. But again, then no, the goal of my not being here is goal. not going to work. So the thing of it is, you know, I mean, the only reason mm -hmm. I stayed the whole meeting is because obviously we're having this conversation at the end of the agenda. I would have much rather did that hour one right after my report. But that's not the option today. I. Like I said, I, I'm happy to test. If we didn't have sound, there wasn't much testing I could do. We resolved that on Friday. So I was very excited to get that fixed, and now the computer likes the Yeti again. YouTube was not a fan. All right, uh, update video and audio equipment. I heard a little bit about some discussion with the equipment. The equipment is good, but again, is it the same issue? Uh, the broadband will be an issue, I think, until we get that new server in, and then Will seemed confident that because of the way that we're separating um, the way it comes in, that will do better. But they have to designate that the guest Wi Fi cannot draw from the administrative Wi Fi because right now it's equally portioned. So if they start to have a bunch of people pulling, it's so just going to be an if issue. If we make that priority, Everybody else is going to be slow, right? And that's their problem, not ours, because we're right. doing what we need. Because obviously, streaming takes priority to people scrolling because of the form. But that's not the video. I'm going to two connections. That's the. It is the variety, it. right? Yes, yeah, the hardware yeah. behind. Right. And he said changing platforms won't necessarily change the need; that they're pretty equal in what they're going to need for broadband. So he said, hopefully. That will help the issue because, again, I mean, recording and streaming are two very different animals, and I know we've we've talked about it several times and compared it to John Speed, but it is not the same. So I'm hoping that again it can go better. I mean, I'm looking right now. We're at 360, and we're at 32 frames per second. That jumps down to 25 frames per second. It keeps changing. And the bit rate is 1.5, and then jumps up to 1.7. So I mean, I, yeah, I can think see the matrix as we go, and I, I do want to continue testing. I'm not saying that I don't, but I think that as far as changing equipment, it might be premature to do that if we don't know if it's going to improve substantially the second we get the broadband fixed, because that would be 
a silly investment if what we have is actually good. Sure. I, and again, I think the point is that um, had there been more of an orderly transition, you know, we could have worked through some of these issues together. Um, we will continue to do, you know, to, to provide whatever data you're interested in. I got your message uh, from Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think the point is there were still activities left, and this is documentation for you. Um, and I'm hoping for some kind of orderly transition. Okay, storage options. Um, I thought we had heard last month that's not an issue. That is not an issue. Is that the you carbonite talk, issue? You talk about well, carbonite. Has, carbonite has been installed at the cloud backup. It's very secure, and it is on Jen's computer now. It was installed on. Friday. Well, reinstalled. I had it the whole time, but it expired so bad. Yep. So it was reinstalled. It's updated, so everything she downloaded was downloaded like at two o'clock in the morning or something crazy like that. So, so it's a cloud, state. not on a hard drive. No, okay. Not a hard drive. It's it's cloud storage. storage. Hard drives fail. Jim, is that allowing us to have control of that then? Does that Carbon make that? Yeah, mistake? Carbonite. You can access. Her computer fails, it's all fine, you just pull it down. Okay, that's how it's all backup works. And then he said there is a backup that it would be on the server even after, even with the cloud backup, so it's actually dual save. Okay. Because I asked him to kind of expand on it so that I can understand if asked, and I didn't quite understand how secure it was, so there's a double backup apparently with the Carbonite. Thank you. And Kim, in your report, you talked about virus issues with Carbonite. That was yes. my understanding. <laughs> or was that that we were re-signing up for the Norton antivirus? Yeah, we, we switched antivirus. Yeah. And we added Carbonite. That was one to Doug's computer. We used to be with Norton. And several different things going on. And they have been resolved. No, we're not doing more. We're doing EDR. We're doing that is. That's, um, that's what we'll install on yeah. Friday. Okay, okay. we're good at home now? Again, I, the point, I don't expect everyone to sit here to go through all seven issues. The point is we're to try and have a transition um, and, and to learn I, I told that there Kim. was. Um, to list all of your issues mm -hmm. that you had in your email, so just, to make, mm -hmm. just to make sure that we touched mm -hmm. on all seven that were mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's why they're listed in this order. Okay. All right. Okay. Future newsletters. Mm -hmm. um, the discussion we've had past meetings was is that we all are representatives from our town. If there is any issues, it's going to be up to us. If there's any issues that somebody wants to see, okay, let us know. And we'll get our uh, articles to Jen. She will format it and send it to us at the next meeting before the mailing is for our approval. That's the only way it's going to work. Now, the newsletter itself is. Is just one vehicle. By the way, I don't, I don't get it. I can't I see yours on the on the board. Yeah, I brought mine because we didn't get any here at the time. Uh, but we yeah, we we deleted all the comments. I mean the first the time we got ten of them. Right. This so, time we got zero. Okay. The That's why I brought mine from home. Right. So we had one for reference here. Gotcha. So um that's the way it should work. And I, I think Joe mentioned a good point, but you know, as far as you know, time. Well, the actual articles themselves, we should know the issue as board members, and if we get requested for that, we submit that. Um, I will say, with regard to the board, like submitting ideas and topics and things like that, it needs to be kept very much in the forefront of everyone's mind that. There's limited space on a newsletter. We do not have the budget to do four 11 by 17 two-sided 
mailings. We're going to have to do our big sale to, to do the three. next one. It was to, to, do, to, do, to do the fall yeah. newsletter and mail it out, we're going to have to have a big sale or something. Because yeah. we're left with a budget of less 12, than $1,200. 12, 12, 12. Okay. But the one that goes, we still are planning on going to tax bill, right? That's correct. correct. But that yeah. is about $500. Yeah. Yes. Correct. And that's just, that's 11 by 7, or um, 8 and a half by 11, yeah. two sided. Well, how do you know what the budget is if you're asking for the invoice from the last? We've episode? talked to I you. I wrote the last. Actually, yes. yes. We should put it on. Yeah. I didn't write the What was the starting today. budget dollar amount? Um, I believe it was about 2500 because there's there's a third the entire town board publication budget was thirty five hundred dollars, but you have to take into account that's the board of review, that's liquor license notices, that's ordinances, that's um, the budget notices, all those things go into that budget. So postings for the postings for the off the top of my head, I don't recall. Well, when we do, I want to say we did 5000 for the communications committee. There, there was no, a separate there's no more. Separate. Was a separate. Mm -hmm. On the note that Kim wrote, the first newsletter was 1197.17, and this maze was 1561.80. So you wrote dollars. a balance of around $1,200. Yep. Will be a lot for two newsletters. Yep. And we can uh, apply for December, and that leaves 700. 700 for December, 1150. That's why we're going to have to have a basis. So, so there was a request we, we that we right. might have to Or do a budget reallocation resolution. Uh, so, my point was just simply understand that everything that you might feel is important to go in there might not be able to be in there to be at, at that newsletter time. Um, because our goal when we talked about it after the transition, was the calls that we're getting, that people are, you know, that we get in the office on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and you guys get emails and phone calls all the time too. So I'm not discounting that, but understand that that'll all get weighed when we're putting it together, if that makes sense. Okay, and then if we're mailing newsletters to everybody in the town, why do we need an electronic version? So the goal was to reduce the number that we would be mailing and the expense of that. And we, in the next one we're going to include in the newsletter, if you prefer to get it electronically, please contact us at this email address to remove you from the mailing list and get an electronic version yeah. instead. We can do that prematurely by using a mail merge for all of the addresses that are current subscribers and ask the current subscribers if they would prefer an email version rather than a written news. Can you do that with both mail? So we can get it. everybody? So we could literally We're not mail all of those people right now. No, everybody in town? No, everybody in town. Which is 300 and something. What so, I just heard is well, that would be the new letter that you put that in. So right, yeah. so we could cut it could ahead of time too to maybe get the budget a little bit lower before we include that in the newsletter, which I yeah, I could kind of help with budgeting, but yeah. okay. it's just seeing. Is it already uploaded to the budget. website now? No. no. Why not? I don't have, have a PDF copy. We didn't oh. get a copy. If Do I had one, yeah, I can upload it. Can we get one? Yes, that's okay. part of the transition. Okay. I, it was mailed out since mm -hmm. the last May meeting. Yes. Okay. Right. I got my first course. Last week I did reply to him right away. Right. The same day. So, I mean, right. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Uh, video requirements uh, for all, should be probably all meetings held that we take it at mm -hmm. Town Hall. Uh, this has been discussed many, many times. Uh, did you have something in addition to what's been discussed on this? No, I think it was an open issue. Open issue, issue. okay. Yeah. That, that issue already has an answer. And it's the same answer it was two years ago. We, as a town, unless we're going to tell the Lake Mueller Man District and the part of Lake Protection and Rehab District to go away, okay, and there are a bunch of town residents, each one of them, they have to request from us to have this same streaming, okay? We do it for... Um, this meeting, we do it for the plan commission. It's supposed to be for communications too. I think we stream only one. That's what you were at. 
We just did an audio recording. It was never audio yeah, recorded sure. after that. So, but anyway, what I'm getting at is the outside agencies, even like um, agencies. We have Potage Lake, Miramar Property Owners, Sherwood Drive, yeah. WPA, <coughs> Potters, Lake Protective and Rehabilitation. Yeah, and John's point was well taken. John said, hey, we're, the town residents are paying for this. So if they're paying for this, can we require it? Well, for the two governing bodies that have their own districts, okay, no, can't. Now, you could say that for Miramar or uh, Shorewood, you said the property association, okay. The point is, is what can we force, or what do we want to force uh, to do, you know, to which ones, so. Right, so that was, yeah, we were going to make recommendations and yeah. We've, had, we, we've had the right. Well, we don't have the right. Do you want everyone to do it? No. 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 That's, that's, that's what the board at the annual meeting was. That's yeah. why we had work. So you put together the list and determine yeah. what's applicable or what would be required. If they don't want to report it, don't let me do it. Streamline the process. And they, can't, they can't. 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 They can not they can not you know, I think the charge was more, again, we have to have, you know, one of the webmasters here at that. It's not going to be start it, walk away, okay? Some, one of those three got to be here. No. Yes? No. Well, eventually, well, we're leaving the platform open if one of us walk away from this computer. So then whoever is at that meeting has access to the platform. You can't but get to the one. Want and that kind of thing. That's contamination. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Yes. This is going to be a continuing know. discussion. Exactly. Sure. That's right. And I think it also needs to be noted. Um, it also needs to be noted that, like the Lake Villa Management District, they're not getting town money for their management district. Nope. They are a separate entity that gets their money directly from the county when taxes are paid. Uh, no. From well, they don't get money. From, they get from the residents themselves who live in right. the village district. Right. It's taxes. a separate assessment. It's not from every taxpayer that is giving money so to my, the new my, district. My money on the south side of town was not paid for. Exactly. So they're we're we're not district. they're not getting town money okay. for their district. They're getting their own money. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not what the vote was. The vote doesn't matter, John. The vote doesn't. I know what you're saying. You're saying the board said, Mr. Chairman, point of order. We're allowing uh, Mr. Stas to participate in the discussion. He has no business doing that. He that needs to be quiet. Your running commentary pollutes your. I, I may that. have started that by invoking his name. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Did you finish that? I just I think it needs to be understood that tax all taxpayer dollars are not going to these districts that they're asking to have meetings streamed for. Right. Understood. Okay. And that, again, that goes for um, probably also the same thing. Uh, Jim said maybe more discussion. Well, the discussion on this is not to me is done until we get a, a request from those two independent governing bodies. You know, unless this board wants to say, you guys go away, you know, you're, you're not part of this town. That's ridiculous. You know, so. Well, that's an option if someone makes that motion. Board, it's a, <laughs> board can decide that. I mean, I have one. The, we both can make a motion right now to either put this matter to rest or to explore the fact that groups that use the town hall. Reach out to them and see if they want to be streamed. If they want to pay someone to sit there for two hours. There's been some preliminary discussion there. Who did I meet with that you sent my way? Uh, I believe it was uh, the secretary for the management district, the Villa management okay. district. And I think she made it pretty clear that that was not something they were willing to do and that they would go elsewhere for their meetings. Right. So, right. Because I they mean, have call ins, a lot of call ins. Does that look poor? If we're sending our own organizations to the village to go to the library or somewhere else, rather than staying in the town 
but they will present to people because if they don't want to stay here. And I'm not arguing it, but from what I'm hearing, they're not our organizations because they only. Well, right, but I mean, no, no those located in the town. I understand that, but we say our organization with the way the change is made, you know what I'm saying? So just. All right. Okay. And again, yeah. just to make it clear, I keep hearing about the all the you know the, the motion at the annual meeting. At that same annual meeting, I said they'll have to ask us. That's on your record. Well, and that's advisory only. There's no statutory Correct. requirement. Correct. But uh, the point is, is that there was a request. So if we get a request, this board will discuss it, and if there's a <coughs> charge deal, we'll come up with it. And we'll do it until we get a request from those two. You know, we're we're not doing anything. So, <clears throat> so are you making a motion then to we don't table it, or there's? I didn't hear. I didn't hear a motion. Discussing it. Oh, okay. Never know about Anybody want to make a motion about video requirements for all meetings held at town hall? I make a motion that we. Table the video requirements for all meetings held at town hall until which time somebody approaches us about doing such. Okay. Might want to be more specific about until that. Until organizations, <laughs> yes, organizations that use the town hall approach us about streaming their yeah. meeting. Okay. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second it. Discussion. Hearing none on the motion, roll call vote to uh, table this deal with video requirements for all means held town hall. Karkowski, aye. Church, aye. Wales, aye. Reyes, aye. Walker, aye. So if it comes up, we'll certainly handle it. All right, you have one more. Yeah, from the research that we found that most websites have an about section rather than a mission statement or anything like that. So that was one of the things on our action item. Yes. Well, we're not doing a mission vision that we already acted on. Um, the only That's about that's on our now is probably my video, right? Correct. You know, um, exactly. I did look at other town websites and I did find a couple of interesting. Um, about sections that were very historical, they were very interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if something. Probably long or short Um, they were probably mm -hmm. about half mm -hmm. page. Yeah. yeah, just the like history kind of. It's interesting. Yeah, there were some that specifically questions. said history. There were some that said about and talked about the resources and the parks and things like that. There were yeah. some more that graphics. specifically mm -hmm. said history and yeah. So no, there's options. Demographics, I thought, too. And I don't think demographics change all the time. You know, I kind of like what you two did with the with the logo. Why don't you take a stab at that for the board's uh, approval? Okay. A month or two, no rush. Okay. Can you do that? We can do that. You okay with the board? We can have them. Uh, yeah. Who's the so webmaster? There's three. Jen. Oh, I mean, the real one. Yeah. 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 had mentioned at one time, like the 2050 plan, the, or some plan that had mm -hmm. a statement. But they're more of um, Right, but there might be something to draw from. Who is going to draw? I don't even know what 2050 is. This is more like a deal. Well, I was just talking about that. Okay. Okay. Um, we're on to new business. Uh, we already received that petition from the residents of Prairie Road. Uh, we heard the input basically in the public comment section. Um, I do think we should add, uh, we have the petition in front of us, we should add to uh, next month's agenda to have a discussion on the pros and cons of doing that. Should we do it? And if so, potentially authorize attorney knows to uh, and draft what's needed for that, if anything. Could we so ask Todd to, to give us some financial oh. breakdown? Because I know they did it on Eshore for a short time. Right. Right. So we're not going to have any discussion on this right now? Well, we, well, I would really appreciate that discussion. Yeah, yeah, over just, three hours yeah, just yeah. to have that's, it. Well, that's what I want to say. Yeah, I mean, I you that. may not like all of it, but I, I think we should at least have a little discussion on it. I mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We don't get no notices for the petition to be submitted. Mm -hmm. Okay, to take action on that without 
having the board to even do any more research on the one person talking to me. Right. Okay. I did bring up what happened in the other one, the East Shore one, okay, you know, the state the car was thrown. And I did also hear that there's potential even some cost deal. And again, they're not really that expensive. Our DPW would put them in, you know, in spring and take them out in the fall. Well, you also mentioned that East Shore had it. We already yeah. have them. What's the cost? I'd be happy to donate my own time. That's why I was thinking well, we really need to DPW. Yeah, we have to look at and again, the ones we had there, we probably will go against that version and probably go on uh, like Booth Lake, go look at theirs and see if that would be acceptable to you and others. Just again, I might be happy to install at my residence. I'd be happy to install them and take them off before winter. It would be four four pieces. It wouldn't really yes, unless you want one together. It, it wouldn't make any difference. Anything's better than nothing. I'd be, again, I'd be happy to donate my time to help the community. How many homes are on the street? What are the children at play find? No, there's not more. There's well, 12 houses. There's probably about 15, 16 kids. Is it a dead end road or does it go all the way through? It goes. There's a bunch of different ways you can go. Brad right. is a dead end in the back. Right. So it's, been a, it's been a long time since I've been down the fairway. And I realized that children at play signs are not as much of a detriment okay. as feet. G turns, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As speed bumps, but are there any children at play up signs out there now? Nope. Not okay. I mean, that's something we can do with Correct. speed bumps. And there's shallow speed bumps that aren't like, I mean, the ones that they had from the hardware store that were like this. Dear God, that's the point of it, and that's what I'm wanting to get. Well, even to. those shallow ones slow you down. Well, well they did the boot on the boot, they don't slow people down. They're doing people serve you some miles an hour. Easy on their suspension versus slowing down. Now, my suspension, I got a whole super impressive. Again, it's a trade off. The steeper it is, the more effective they are because it's traffic common, which means you have to, or you're going to lose your teeth or suspension. Okay. You if you have the softer ones, like you mentioned, you know, at Booth Lake, they sometimes tend to ignore them or race between them. Okay, but you've got kind of a shorter road there, so there's less chance of that. Right. You know? So, but uh, what I'm saying is, look at th that version over there and see if, what you think of it, so you can tell us. That Absolutely. Well, your feet. Feet, I think. The other thing that I need some information about is the, um, I don't know how many kids in the area ride bikes. I'm concerned that trying to go over a speed bump with a kid on a bicycle might cause some yeah, crashes sure. as well. I know it's um, not real research per se. Oh, I know. But, they're, but like they're, the, the kids that do live on the, in the area, they do stay more or less in front of their homes. Everybody, okay. they're young, unless they are with their parents, who okay. will go for walks and whatnot. Okay. I mean, my daughter, she's, she's three, she can't ride a bike yet, but down the block then there's at least eight kids, and they all just stay right well, in front of their area. I just remember going over the speed bumps that were on East Shore on my bicycle, and they were pretty treacherous, treacherous to say the least. Understandably so. Yeah. And it's looking at the speed limit. That what is the speed limit sign at the bumps? Uh, fifth, fifth, well, no, no, not at all. At the bump, there's a sign. Five, it says five miles an hour, right? Which yeah. means that five miles per hour is not going to lose anything, right? right. Or, sure. uh, the ones we had uh, were probably eight miles per hour, I think, on the ones. That, yeah. So, A, I know that when we had talked about our speed bumps over here on East Shore, I'm here, yeah, I'm gonna be the bad guy. Um, by Booth Lake, there's a, sometimes 150 kids all day long standing at that there and crossing that street. I, I have, I also am a grandfather. I have a granddaughter. I have my daughter who was in my front yard when the snowplow came by. I can't see that, <clears throat> and, so, and threw a basketball-sized granite rock hit the bottom of my house it actually pushed from my wall, it broke off the foundation. Now my daughter wanted to make a snowman because it was a day off of school, a snow day. I want speed bumps, but I also have a hard time. We start doing this, our entire township is gonna to be speed bumps after speed bumps after speed bumps. I have said it, I've had situations, I'm a grandfather, I have kids on our road, people come up and I'm not saying just everyone from Illinois, 
there's locals too, but summertime comes, there's people flying past my house, and including in the past has been GBW going a little bit. You know, and I live on a very small road where yeah. you barely get two cars past. That's exactly like that. You know, so I understand where you're coming from. I just, we're going to become speed bump capital of southeastern Wisconsin. It, 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 and I don't, I'm not trying to say things lightly for you because I do understand the safety, maybe some signage. But I, I, we're going to start, we're going to open up a can of worms here and and we're going to have, it's going to be nonstop. Is that is that the trade off though, is opening a can of worms versus the safety of our youth? That's, no. that's what I'm seeing here is because that's what's important. That's what dogs can get hit, people fly down under. Right? I understand that. The trade-off the trade off is a no-brainer for me. I could I could spend a million dollars on speed bumps to prevent your kid from getting in my car. That's that's I'm just where telling I'm you right. speed bumps also actually cause accidents if you start looking at the research because we started <laughs> looking at it for East Shore and they're actually can actually cause car accidents. Because people and not that people are abiding by the law, but if they're not, then all of a sudden the kids are in danger in the front yard because some yep. there are some kids going too fast. You know what I'm saying? There's, you know, there's research both directions. I, I'm, I'm just saying I'm that. Just advocating for. I, my, I totally understand. I just don't want you to. I'm about safety, but I'm also about the reality. Well, it goes back to the petition. Of everybody, everybody signed. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm, I'm not trying to no, no, ruffle feathers or argue or, or anything I, like I, that. I May I speak, Joe? You're done. Uh, first of all, I would like some data to substantiate the speeding. A suggestion, particularly by FedEx or other sure. services. So I think the police should be <coughs> doing some miles per hour. I all that. Could, could, be, do that could be tough because I, I I drove your road five times to try and get a feel for it and, and your request. You, you've got a curve. That's my house. That wine curve, especially when my truck is parked there. Nobody can see which yeah. what's coming. So you have a curve and. It seems to me as if you've saturated the awareness. So I'm guessing that all 12 residents don't have a problem with going 25, 20, or 15 because everybody knows everybody because that's the nature of fairway. Yes. So the five times I went down your street, four times there was not a single person, not a single car. But then again, the one time Saturday morning, there were children walking on fairway, there were children playing in the front yard. Seems like a unusual concentration of people than what you normally see in the, the district. So, while I don't know the what we'll do in a month, I think we should get some information relative to actual speeds if that can be done through the police department. And then, um, like uh, Commissioner Cook also always encourages us on the Planning Commission, we should all drive on fairway and get a, an actual perspective on it before we come back next month and make some decision. I would appreciate that. I would, I would be extremely appreciative. I really would. All right. All right. So we'll add that on. Uh, I think the research we already did is still applicable. Uh, and, and Chad is right. Uh, there is research that shows that uh, that indeed can cause, you know, accidents. But you, this is not, I mean, this is not an area where people are going to come into it. At 45 or 50 miles per hour, and then come into it uh, very slow. Uh, so there is a little bit of difference there. So well, I did oh. mention to you also that there is a posted speed limit sign at 25 miles an hour at the very end of fairway right on East Shore. There, mm -hmm. it is absolutely overgrown with trees, bushes, mm -hmm. branches. Mm -hmm. You didn't know it was there, you would never know it was there. Yeah, I know some few signs like that. They're down more around the community. Sorry, Jim, what did you want? To they can wait till next month. But the DPW definitely has to get on those. I was going to say, if you see signs. The branches. I understand they have a full plate. I really do. I'd be happy to go do it myself again. My no, you can't. Safety, my family. You don't have to. I've done it. Shoot me a but, text or an email. We'll have to yeah. call us. Yeah. Because they, thank you for your patience, Tyler. Yeah. But if there's a sign, just call us, let us know where yeah. it is, yeah. and we'll get the guys yeah. out there. That's good. For us. <laughs> Yep. This is an informative meeting for me. <laughs> Unless it's at 2.50 in the afternoon, they're typically out there same day. Yeah. Yep. All right, I'll make yeah. it brief. Along Silver Lake in Economwalk, the speed limit is 25. Almost every resident that has their peer across the street has in their yard yellow 
recommended 15 mile per hour signs. And that seems to slow people down, even though that's not the official speed. But almost every single resident has one of those in their yard. Were those provided by Silver Lake, Jim? I doubt it. And probably all yeah. just got together. They kind of summit, actually. Probably, probably like, like the turtle area. crossing sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that people just found their own. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move. Um, authorized attorney to draft letter to property owner for repair of 65 by 11 foot section on Delsman Road. I looked at it again uh, two months ago and a month ago. Oh, yeah, it's bad. That 65 foot by 11, which is basically one by all occasions. And what happened there is the property owner that built the big ponds mm -hmm. out on Bell School Road near Honey Creek Road, I believe. Uh, he loaded up an $85,000 track backhoe onto his low boy on the road. And it's like, are you kidding me? You know? <laughs> and he said, well, it was only paid a month ago. That had nothing to do with it. There, but it was and the motion is to. <laughs> so the actual, uh, and, and we gave him kind of lenience last year and said, he said he could find a guy that does all the repair work that to repair it. And the guy attempted it, and he actually made it worse. So, you know, it needs professional help. It's a brand new road, and the statutes are on our side, but I want the letter, you know, should come from the, the attorney. So that's that's what I, why I put that. Uh, uh, so I authorize attorney Mills to draft a letter to the property owner for repair of the 65 by 11 section on Bell School Road. Second. All right, Bill Wicker, second discussion. Do we not all favor say aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? None. I'll leave the details. What's the gentleman's name? What's the property <coughs> location? What caused it? Got its pictures. That might be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's almost like going over like those. Data, 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 data. Well, they probably had a gator track. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, attorney report. Yes, I have three items on versus ordinance 2023-1, amending section 2.105.070 sub 4 of the town code regarding video retention. It reads, the town board of the town of East Troy, Walworth County, Wisconsin, is hereby ordained as follows. One, the section 2.105.070. Sub 4 is amended to read as follows. For taped records of meetings. Tom Ward, the town of, town of East Troy, any committee, commission, agency, authority, or any other special governmental units of the town of East Troy and their officers, their employees, and their agents of the same may destroy any taped, the new languages, audio or video records of any public meeting of the aforesaid no sooner than 90 days after the public meeting minutes have been approved by the appropriate governmental unit if new language the audio or video comma or both comma were used to make and maintain minutes of the public meeting new language if the audio or video recordings are not used in the preparation of the public meeting minutes the audio tape and or video recording must be retained and the custodians may not destroy the record for seven years in accordance with the provision of section 2.105.070 sub 3 of this ordinance two all italicized language is new any section of the ordinance not modified by italicized language or identified for deletion remains unchanged. Three, this ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and publication as provided by law dated this 12th day of June. All right, so this is a ordinance or standard deal as we waive the second reading and act on the first reading. There would be a motion to waive the second reading. I believe we waived the second reading of ordinance number 2023-1. Oh, second. All right. And there will be some discussion on this, but we need a motion uh, to start discussion. We need a vote first. Well, I'm waving the second reading. Oh, we did that. No, we got a second. Good late, 10 o'clock, folks. Uh, okay. We, uh, the motion yeah. 
We have a motion. motion. Yeah, yes. I made the motion. Okay, we need a motion. To waive the second reading. We have a motion to waive the second reading of ordinance 2023 motion. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay. Now we need a motion to act on this so we can open the discussion. I move we approve ordinance number 2023-1 an ordinance amending section 2.105.070 sub 4 of the Town of East Troy's Municipal Code. For purposes of opening discussion, I'll second that motion. Okay, any discussion? First of all, there's a big discrepancy here between uh, standard operating procedure and complying with state law on record retention. And the real fact of the matter is we're deleting nothing. We're going to be keeping these videos until some future board determines that they're irrelevant. Who knows when that could be? Okay, it could be many, many years. So this actual ordinance, what it's really saying is, you know, by law, here's what we got to do. We use them for, you know, making minutes or not. Well, it's either 90 days or, or it's seven years. To me, it might as well be a thousand years because this board and probably anybody in this room, well, I understand anybody in this room, most people in this room won't be around when that future board says, well, what are we keeping this for? Okay. It will come to a point where the storage may become an issue. Doesn't sound like that issue exists today. So that's what I think there's a big discrepancy on what this ordinance is really doing. Well, no, we also needed an ordinance change because so we had it. only referenced our audio in the past. Right. And we're doing something different now. So that had to be reflected in our ordinance. And that's why they're both listed in the audio or video. So that, that's why we're there. So discussion, which really got anything. Like I said, we didn't delete anything. Then we shouldn't say what we do and do what we say. I guess then why why differentiate if the videos are used for meeting minutes when that was not the initial intent of the videos, if you have the audio? Why add video in that section? Why not leave it at the seven years of the rest? Good point. Jen, you I no. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, I'm done discussing, and I, I feel bad for it, but I'm done. I mean, this has been, we've been, you, you know how I, I think I said how I feel about it. I'm just, I think things were voted on, and it is what it is, and I, I feel like I got to just carry on. I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. The initial point of streaming was to reach people. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. It was not to hold on to it for seven years. Doesn't mean they're going to be able to watch it live. But they can watch it, and it's not going to go away tomorrow. It's not going to go away. And we don't destroy the minutes, which are the official record of the meeting. Right? Yeah, and there's a big difference. And we have the audio for years. I have audio for years. But when I started, we had cassette tapes. Nobody even has a cassette player anymore. So, I mean. <laughs> In the car, too. <laughs> well, so, are you laughing? Yeah. 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 But we don't hear. We don't have a cassette player anymore. So, I mean, that's why keeping it, it'll, it's going to be uploaded to Carbonite. It's not going away. And the, and the years don't make any difference. The no, it doesn't. It makes no difference at all. Not at all. All right, I didn't hear your comments. You're going to miss it. Chad, I just want to be clear. Even though you don't want to talk about it. Exactly. That's <laughs> not to understand. <laughs> well, but your preference would be we, we just keep these things. We keep holding on to them forever. I've said my preference before you have multiple. I just rather not discuss it anymore. I don't. I don't feel it's going in any way that I feel it, it could. So I'm done discussing it. Okay. I feel like it's just everything just overturned. So again, again, there's a difference between the plan of the law and what the reality. The reality is standard operating procedure. We can get rid of it. That's the whole point. I mean, we updated it to include video 
we don't make a point of destroying it. I think it's good the way it is. We just don't want to be out of compliance with our own ordinance. Right. If something mm -hmm. fails catastrophically. Right. That's it. Right. Call a question. Call the question, Bill. <laughs> well, I, I wanted, Michelle, I wasn't clear on your point. So your position. <laughs> okay. I listened, but I was like, I'm not quite sure what you meant. So, I would, well, number one, if we're saying it's not going to be an issue, but we're still not willing to put our words behind it, um, you know, we said that it's, it's going to be there for years, but then the argument to change it to say that we can destroy it in 90 days is what if there's something catastrophic? So I think that's kind of contradictory. Um, my, I would agree with it if we did not include the point that the video, as long as it's used for meeting minutes, can be destroyed after 90 days because that was not the initial intent of the video. And then the second half addresses that videos are subject to the seven years record protection. If they're not used for meeting, they're two, they're two separate things. The law requires a certain thing. I have the opinion from the records retention board that if the video is used for meeting minute preparation, 90 days is on their schedule and we got you know, different we got different information right. from the records retention at the supervisor at the state and well, how are, who's to say well this month it was used for the minutes and this month it wasn't how who's right. going to document all of that in no, fact, no one what's the point time exactly so what's the point of differentiating that the videos were used for the public. Do you think anybody from seven years is going to watch this four hour meeting? If something comes I up where they're agree. asking yeah. about the communications we'll committee and why it was all, it'll be there. Potentially. Good it'll morning. be there. All right. So. Thank you. All right. Uh, we had our motion in a second to approve this ordinance number 2023 1 as read. Uh, roll call, Volkowski, aye. Church, aye. Wales, nay. Reyes, nay. Booker, aye. All right, motion to read. It'll be there forever. All right, next one. Uh, next is ordinance two, or sorry, 2023-2, an ordinance amending section 16.25.030. The Town of East Tri Municipal Code agrees the Town Board of the Town of East Tri Walworth County, Wisconsin is hereby ordained as follows. One, that section 16.25.030 of the Town of East Tri Municipal Code is amended to read as follows. We are adding a six, parking without launching, $8 fee. Two, and that's all italicized. Two, all italicized language is new. Any section of this ordinance not modified by italicized language or identified for deletion remains unchanged. This ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and publication as provided by law dated this 12th day of June. I move we approve ordinance. Uh, uh, wait, uh, second wait, reading. Second reading. Oh, I, I move wait. that we waive the second reading of ordinance second. number 2023-2. The ordinance amending section 16.25. Point zero three zero. I'm going to repeat your second. Second. All right. Uh, discussion. Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. So um, I, make, the second I make a motion to approve number 2023 2 and ordinance amending section 16.25.030, the town of East Troy Municipal Code. Second. All right. Uh, the approval of ordinance 2023-2, we have a motion second in the discussion. Here and then all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> None. Motion carries. Third item is resolution 2023-3. It's a resolution of the town board of the town of East Troy adopting Walworth County 
Natural Hazards Mitigation Plan 2022 through 2026. It reads, the town board for the town of East Troy resolves as follows. Whereas the town of East Troy town board recognizes the threat that natural hazards pose to people and property within the town of East Troy. And whereas the town of East Troy has participated in, reviewed and approved the multi-hazard mitigation plan, hereby known as Walworth County Natural Hazards Mitigation Plan 2022 through 2026, in accordance with federal laws, including the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act, comma, as amended, the National Flood Insurance Act of 1968, comma, and the Natural Dam Safety Program Act, comma, as amended, and whereas the Walworth County Natural Hazards Mitigation Plan 2022 through 2026 identifies mitigation goals and actions to reduce or eliminate long-term risk to people and property in the town of East Troy from the impacts of, ha of future hazards and disasters. And whereas adoption by the town of East Troy town board demonstrates its commitment to hazard mitigation and achieving the goals outlined in the Walworth County Natural Hazards Mitigation Plan 2022 through 2026, now, therefore, be it resolved by the town board of the town of East Troy as follows. The town of East Troy adopts the Walworth County Natural Hazards Mitigation Plan 2022 through 2026. While content related to the town of East Troy may require revisions to meet the plan approval requirements, changes occurring after adoption will not require the town of East Troy to readopt any further iterations of the plan. Subsequent plan updates following the approval period for this plan will require separate adoption resolutions. Although the plan has already received approval from both FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, and WEM, Wisconsin Emergency Management, who determined that the required criteria for multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plans outlined in 44 CFR Part 201 had been met, <coughs> adopted by the town board of the town of East Troy, Walworth County, Wisconsin, this 12th day of June. I'll make a motion to waive the second reading. No, we, we don't, don't need this for a resolution. Oh, even better, I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 2023-3, resolution of, of the town board, the town of East Troy, adopting Walworth County uh, Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan 20. 22 2026. Second. Motion seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. All right. We have the original public comments number two, item 12. Anyone have any public comments? Yes. It's an endurance game. Four, I don't know, what is it, three hours, 45 minutes? Yeah. yeah. I think Facebook stops at four hours, so. I have eight. We're going to have to play like eight. eight minutes. Yeah. All right, uh, two things on the list um, for the transition. I remember in January when we were talking about the newsletter, the .gov website. It was supposed to be, we published it in the newsletter, even though I said it didn't work because it was going to be lit up, and I think we're still now six months later and it's not there. I would like to add that to the list and have it reported on because I don't know what's taking so much time. Um, no, no, I can address it, but go ahead. And the second thing is, um, if you're going to use Carbonite, which is a formal backup system, you're not going to be backing up from Facebook. So, there should be a procedure uh, for a backup procedure for videos. Um, anything that's going to be stored out there, that procedure should include how often it's going to be done and how much redundancy to keep. Uh, a lot of times you back up to the cloud, you're going to have backup May, backup June, you know, and you might have three or four backups so that you have redundancy. But, I don't know how Carbonite does it. 
That's the only two things that happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can you answer that question? Um, that for the dot gov, we were going through transition period with a different IT companies. I have contacted Will with Taylor Services, and we are working on that process. Cool. Currently. As for the carbonate procedure, it's an automatic backup. It does it automatically. <laughs> so once we figure out how the system works, Jeff I don't know about that. To upload the video to the computer from the platform. So my goal is if YouTube turns out to work out, even the past videos from Facebook, I can then upload to YouTube and back it up from a file in the uploading. So I'll have a file on my computer and a file on YouTube. Yep. And then I would be able to, my goal, place the YouTube link in the feed by that agenda. Yeah. And the Carbonite then does an automatic process. Nightly. Yeah. Nightly. Oh, okay. it's nightly. It, it okay. just does it by itself. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Okay. Thank uh, you. Any other comments? All right. I just want to thank you guys. I know decisions are hard to make um, in regard to the road. and. Uh, one thing I like is um, I will follow up with the residents of our road on an email. My understanding is it's business as usual for this winter. Are you guys going to be sending a letter out? Is that the intent um, that I can notify? Is there going to be some kind of letter? For the letter. No, no, not at this time. Not at this time. Okay, no. great. And then as far as video recording and stuff, I'm not speaking for the Potter's Lake Protection and Rehabilitation yeah. District. We do not take any taxpayer money except for the people within our district. If we had the ability to live stream those meetings, I think it would be beneficial for our district. Just me as an individual, I'd have to bring it to the other board members. But if there was a way where I could upload that on our website where someone who wasn't able to, an Illinois resident, wasn't here on the weekend, they could click on it and see that, it would really be a benefit, I think, to our constituents. We can do what Stiles is doing. Just have somebody sit back there with a phone and record it and upload it. You're hired. Phenomenal <laughs> job. You don't miss a meeting. I've been on the job for three years. <laughs> Pro bono, too. <laughs> All right. Else for the yeah, I was just going to ask Kim. Can I ask Kim? Sure. Um, so um, I thought that was really great that you got a grant um, for the um, recycling, a 14-8. Um, is that something that would be available every year, or was this a one-time thing? Mm -hmm. For the what? We've been doing. I've been doing it for 19 years. <laughs> okay. We've gotten it every year. It's something that Mr. Murphy and I we do. First, we do the grant application, and then we do the audit every year. Okay. year we I was just kind of curious on that because now that there's going to be an eighteen thousand dollar increase in cost for recycling, and there are some of the costs that now that. With the compost site, with doing that, that we will be able to add to our grant. Absolutely. Okay. So we'll yeah. be able to apply it and yeah. save some money. And the only really change with those grants is the amount. Uh, sure. I think you're right. Ever since you've been on board, there has been a grant. Yep. But depending on what happens in that, you know, I'll be playing. Okay. I just wanted to know when I first started with Mr. Esposito, huh? he and I were way back. Sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. comments? Yeah. I would like to put some uh, bookends on the last two uh, town board meetings on what happened here and uh, just put it out there for the future electors to be able to make voting decisions on what uh, transpired over the last two months. So uh, last month, the May 8th meeting, we had uh, eight people show up and they wanted to speak all in favor of continuing the uh, communications committee. and. Uh, this board voted to abolish the communications committee against the will of eight people that stood here for four and a half hours to express their concerns not to. Um, also tonight, this board uh, kind of went right against what the electors voted for at the annual meeting. They voted for the ATV use on the town roads, which eventually we did get to materialize and happen, and we thank the board for that. But now tonight's vote, uh, we decided we're going to kill the use of ATVs on county roads that go through the town. And that makes about as much sense as driving with this convertible top down in the rain. It doesn't make sense. But then again, certain fractions of the board don't always make sense when you're sitting in the crowd watching. Um, I know votes have 
voting has consequences, and I hope that when the uh, electors go to the polls next year, that they decide to put people in here that are going to actually do the work of them, that they give them the consent to govern for, and not do the work of whoever. I'm not sure who they're working for. Good work for you, John. All right. Uh, no comments? No. I think we should read uh, into the record, or at least acknowledge on the record, that you did get an email from Ken Sess asking that his comments on snow plowing and private roads be read into the record. Now, he was here. He read part of it. He spoke to most of it, but. He said he wasn't going to be here. Um, I don't think he got to the last two paragraphs. Because he wanted to do his whole time. Put it in the minutes? Yeah. I, I did, we did not receive that. We had it in writing that it could read be put it. into the minutes. No. It was not received by myself. I don't know the printed mm -hmm. I have an email. Mm -hmm. So, if someone could forward to us to paraphrase for the minute. As I was going to say, I don't know. Really you guys read it? But it should be read now. So, maybe that needs to get passed to Joe. To he already spoke over here. Yeah, to finish reading it. Oh. Is that, I don't have it. Oh. I read it. Uh, I did not see. Red. No, it says plead as this email as a public comment for the June 12th meeting. It doesn't say read it in the record. My guess is that. No, let's see. Nice little here. Yeah, isn't that the intent? Right. What's the difference? And I won't write it. They're exactly wording. They're afraid. They do. We don't do for me. It be to you, does that mean read in the record? Is that what it means to you? That means yeah. read it during the public comment section. Yeah. Please add this email as a public comment. I guess it does. Yeah. Okay. This was uh, sent June 9th. Right. We read most of it. You only need to read the bottom two paragraphs. I'm not sure where his actual cutoff was. I know, I know the paragraph above the last two. I yeah. already dealt with there are private entities. And he said that. Yeah. I remember he that can provide the service. Well, yeah. I thought you read the whole thing. <coughs> no, he didn't. No, this time ran out. Read. Read and then he was cut off. Private contract. <coughs> no. Very Maybe. slippery slope. That's the last words. It wasn't. I think he only got to Okay, I'll read the last two paragraphs and then we got it for sure. Uh, the agenda item for the this issue cleverly states that only option. The board has is to improve, improve this contract process that has been so far presented and then sets dates to explain to residents receiving the service what is expected from them to continue receiving snow plowing service. What is the option that this is not approved? Apparently discontinuing snow and ice control by the town of East Troy is not an option. This seems to be the direction that whomever created the agenda is dictating. As elected officials, it is your responsibility to represent what your constituents would most likely agree with and support. I cannot imagine if all the residents in the township were presented with the above factual information that the majority would consider anything other than letting private road residents deal with private contractors for snow plowing services. That is the essence of this issue. Time to decide does the town of East Trey need to be involved in the interest a private road residence, very slippery slope. And please add this email to the public comment for the June 12th meeting. So that should be in the record verbatim. Or not verbatim. No, not verbatim. Okay. It's summarized like every other public comment. That's it. Not the packet, we didn't have the packet. <coughs> All right. Um, liquor licenses. Yeah. Um, the spreadsheet that was in your packet has been updated with today. Um, background checks that were on um, the ones that were stated as needed all came back and were cleared. The only operator's license that we still need a beverage serving class certificate for is for Mark Magaki of Little Bell's Dockside. Um, everybody is in good standing with their taxes. They paid the publication fee. 
Some of them have paid the liquor license, but I do not require them to pay that prior to approval. Um, building inspections and fire inspections are all good. Fire and building both? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so everything you just read or that we're looking at on the spreadsheet you are saying is solid? Everybody is solid, except for the one except gentleman. The, one gentleman, the Mark Badaki for the Badaki. Can I make a motion then? Yeah. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, approve license and special events permit 2023-2024 uh, liquor and operator license with the attached spreadsheet. All right. We have a second. Okay. Right, Michelle, second discussion. Hearing none, all people say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Discussion? All right. Uh, we need a motion. Go ahead. Special pending meetings. Um, Michelle, on the 29th, Michelle Bonner, 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 Michelle